This should be fun. Alrighty, guys. Any last changes you got, I'll just let you do well. I do my little opening here. Uh, so, different from our norm, what we've got tonight is a one-shot known as the Mysterium, just for anyone that stumbles across this. And uh, here it goes. So while routing around in your belongings for some trinket or bauble, be it a bag, pouch, rucksack, or even possibly a boot or glove, you all manage to suddenly find yourselves holding a, a mystifyingly black missive. It appears the same as a normal letter in your world would, be it a scroll sealed by wax, a uniquely folded origami note, or a paper envelope. And in all cases, the dark black of the material seems to almost absorb all light. No changes in its hue or gradients in its color, and absolutely no shine of reflected light. Before you can stop yourselves, you find your fingers breaching the respective seals and unfurling the message contained within. Except no words cover the equally black innards of the missive. It's simply blank. But at the moment you try and look away to cast aside the dumb joke someone's clearly tried to play, you find yourself falling towards the page. Quickly, your field of view is filled with nothing but the black void, and just as quickly your mind seems to fade the same way. Black space swirls, dances, and drips across your, across your field of view as a feeling of weightlessness permeates every inch of your body. You suddenly realize you seem to be floating, no feeling anywhere, as every nerve in your body screams at the lack of textile pressure, not even the very density of the atmosphere you're used to living in, gracing what feels like fully exposed skin. Everything is simply empty. Missing. Void. You float for an unknown amount of time, trying desperately to understand even a modicum of the forces, or lack thereof, permeating the space you now find yourself in. Some of you begin to wonder if this is death, if perhaps the last encounter you remember was, in fact, the last you'll ever see. Others fear something far more dangerous, and maybe even malicious. Tales of gods and demons flood the mind, and myth after myth reminds you of the, gr the ca great capabilities of the deities existing beyond your realms, and how often they tend to get mortals wrapped up in their feuds and fun alike. Regardless of the reasoning you find to calm or occupy your mind, time still seems to stretch on endlessly, thick moments of boredom allowing your heads to fill with ever more dread at your current predicament. But finally, after only God knows how gods knows how long, a sense of touch returns to your skin. You begin to feel the comfort of your armor's weight and the sometimes awkward pressures of the weapons you keep on your personage. Warmth begins to flow through the veins that you hadn't realized felt frozen, and the taste of the air begins to spread its way across your tongue. Slowly, as you begin to wiggle your extremities and feel out your body once more, the smell of freshly made bread seems to fill your nostrils, and the growling of your stomachs finally shocks your, fo your body fully awake. When you sit up, you find yourself in an unfamiliar bed. And while that in and of itself doesn't quite bother you, being the adventurers that you are, two other people waking up identically in time with you certainly does. The near harmonious rumbling of all your stomachs once more echoes as you begin to study each other and your surroundings. So if you would, let us start ourselves off with you, Chris. Please introduce your character and give us just a quick description of what the other two would see looking at you. Yeah, five more minutes. Wake me up and then... Hey, shit, <laughs> we're doing this now. Well... The man before you uh, seems to use an excessive amount of pomade to keep his hair almost rigid like a weapon. He's wearing a velour suit, his collar unbuttoned in a swashbuckling way, but he's a little on the overweight side, so it's sending off the wrong signals. He looks around with a calm, calculating demeanor. It's like, Zachary Fish at your service. Yeah, did I just get drunk and fall into another bar after singing my brains out? Uh, as one of my ex-lovers finally caught up to me. Slipped me up. A roofie or something in my drink. Wonderful. <laughs> Fantastic opening. All right. Uh, I'm going to make Blake go next. Man, all of ours are going to suck compared to <laughs> I know! <laughs> nah, you could. He's had this character for years, and we're just like two minutes. <laughs> to be in. fair, Blake actually kind of was technically sitting on this character. He just didn't have a level ready. Yeah, no, I didn't know. Or oh yeah, I meant to read. It's how okay. did you pronounce? How did you pronounce this name? Nat Nuke. What? Nukant what? Sa Saja. You can make any name. You want. <laughs> yeah, you can. You can name it whatever. You I want. know, but I li I liked it. I liked. Uh, it. If I, we're I, being I, realistic, I've only had this character in my brain for about two months. <laughs> yeah, uh, I call. I pronounce. I think Nukunk Slaja. Slaja, I like that. New Kong Slaja. Okay. Yeah, because I'm just, yeah, okay. Uh, I would see. I need another thing. If no. you really need to, we can pass to Fred. I, I can see you put him more under pressure, but. Uh, no, 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 we'll do it. Um, 
Wait, so I just tell everyone about it, or do I have to beat so him as you well? You can do either. If you want to RP it, uh, feel free. If you fe still feel like you need a minute on that, just describe for other people what they would see. So since the other two are kind of looking around the room just the same as your character would be, you know, when they look at you, what is it they see? Okay, so you're going to see uh, a seven and a half foot tall, so his feet are definitely hanging off the end of the bed here. Um, uh, he's in pretty common clothes, not uh, from a fancy town or anything like that. Uh, he definitely came from not necessarily poverty, but uh, like a farm town. Uh, he is wearing scale mail, so he does have some armor and a giant double-bladed scimitar that is wielded by this giant half-goliath of a man. Very nice. Awesome. And then uh, this now we will pass over to you, Fred. Enkis. Uh, Chenkis would stand up on top of his bed, look around, almost frightful of what's going on. Taking it in, you would see Chenkis is wearing well-kept leather armor. He has um, a dagger in one hand already. You had blinked, and you had thought there wasn't a dagger there, but there's a dagger there now. Strapped to him, you also see other light weapons. And Chenkis, is he a goblin? Is he a gnome? Is he a halfling? He is one ugly motherfucker. He's green. He's bald. Does he have a lazy eye? Is that a lazy eye, or is he just looking around the room so quickly that you can't determine where he's looking? Oh, wait a minute. There's a few sprouts of hair on top of his head. Ugh, pointy ears. I'm not quite sure. It's definitely not a halfling. They don't have ears like that. But he seems bigger than a goblin. That is Chenkis. <laughs> I just have one question. Oh my god, that was so good. <laughs> that was Do amazing. Neither of you folks money. <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, feel free to respond. You guys are uh, asked a fun what, what was that? Do you, do you owe us money, or do we owe you money? What was that? Yes. Does he owe either of you money was the actual question, if you didn't hear it. Oh. Yeah, I'll take money. You can give me money. You owe me so five if gold. You're, if, you, if you're asking, then no. I don't owe you any. How about you, tall, dark, and god, you're going to kill me in my sleep? All my debts are settled. Wonderful. Go back to bed. What are we doing here? You're just gonna sleep? Well, I was gonna try to. It's not the first time I've woken up in a place I don't know, understand how I got there, and at least I'll be wearing my clothes this time. Well, I'm I'm not gonna let you sleep in here. You're gonna stay awake. <laughs> so as you guys are chatting, um, you know, you're all kind of continuing to glance around the room and just take in your surroundings, you know, really learn what you can. Uh, the five, you know, you, the, you find yourselves surrounded by like uh, stone walls and floors, um, laying in an assortment, clearly an assortment of beds, um, and you would you'd all be able to judge uh, from you know kind of just past history. Uh, Zachariah might be a bit more tough for you because you're not necessarily as much a landsman, but um, y you all know this is a barracks of some sort. That at least that's your easy estimate or easy guesstimate, I should say. Um, the size of the room itself speaks to it being, you know, perhaps a section of soldiers' quarters at a keep or castle, but the lack of surrounding noise quickly informs all of you that really couldn't be the case. Uh, you all know that a castle or a keep with this size barracks would constantly have people shuffling about or attending to one task or another, uh, but with your stomachs grumbling and no real clear idea of where you currently are, as you all were kind of expressing, a wordless agreement kind of passes between you that it is at least time to get up and out of the beds and, and you know, figure out what's going on. Um, oh, shit. Where's my bag? Looks around. It, yeah, yeah God, so... The livelihood is still here. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, you, you, you would see any pipes. larger weapons uh, or gear, you know, leaning on the, the beds or, or sitting on the tables next to you. It's definitely all still around. Um, and then as all of you kind of stand up and start to um, kind of regather your things, uh, a man would pop up 
kind of just out of the corner of your eyes. And he would simply say, <coughs> Greetings, champions, and welcome to Gemini's Mysterium. I am sure you have many questions, so please do follow me to the cafeteria space so we can get those new bodies of yours all fueled up. And he just... Yes, sir. I only have one question. It's a wonderful suit. Where the hell did you get it? Yeah, as you, you ask that, um, you kind of see him look slightly in your direction, but he still just kind of turns around and simply walks off uh, away from where you can see. They had hard to get. I respect this. Um, I guess let's see what this is about. Yeah. Well, he said something about free food, and I never turned out a free meal. Ignore the little thing in the back. Fish dish is too much. There you go. So yeah, you guys wander over into the next room, uh, and you would basically uh, see across these tables just spans of food, uh, feasts of all sorts, um, and as you sit down and kind of look across the tables and, and think to yourselves, like, wow, I wonder if they have X, you, you just see it. It's on the table. Uh, whatever it is that you're looking for seems to appear as you, you seem to think for, you know, that you, uh, you want to eat it. Good um, sir, I don't know what kind of end you're running here, but the beds suck, but the food is amazing, goddamn. Well, that would be thanks to my little friend Marino here. Hear that, Marino? What? They like your food. Compliments to the food, good chef. This looks delicious. Th th thank, thank you. It's, um, I, I, I trying my best on it. Uh, and Early this... fingers deep into a rack of ribs. <laughs> The sauciest, most fall-off-the-bone ribs that you have ever eaten. God damn, I could take a bath in this sauce. Uh, and Marino's just like, uh, the the spicing is a, a secret recipe. Uh, but you know, essentially, um, before you guys, you know, get too far into the the food, uh, the suited man, you know, he kind of finishes cleaning a monocle. And he positions it in front of his left eye. And a strange green glint kind of flashes among the, the rather mundane bronze-colored piece uh, as he looks out across all of you. Uh, however, you all feel that this gentleman is not really looking at any of you, but, but rather through you. And it seems to kind of uncomfortably raise the proverbial hair on the backs of your respective necks. Uh, but as he gazes across you three, you just kind of feel this general sense of unease change into this sense of he's pleased at your presence so you're not in any danger but it's just really weird right and uh he says as you're all eating well i have a special job in mind for the three of you today hopefully you are willing to cooperate but first and foremost my friend marino here needs to get you all equipped now i have to ask what exactly is it that each of you prefer to use as primary instruments of danger? But danger? You, Only you if run, necessary, man. good sir. You see, I understand exactly where someone like you comes from. So today, you will be attending a party. What kind of party are we talking about here? We talking about a soiree? We talking about a ballroom dance? We talking about a, how do we say, a rowdy soiree? I am one who likes to preserve mystery when available. That's kind of a cock tease. Yeah. I respect that. So you're, you're going to give us stuff? What stuff are you going to give us? Uh, Marino at this point would kind of tiptoe by um, this suited man and would walk up to you. What, what, what is it that you want? What do you got? What do you got? So what what kind of weapons would be kind of uh, readily displayed on you? Uh, hand axe, dagger, short sword, rapier. Okay. All, so all light Malay weapons. Marino or, would guess, um not. reach out, and she she wouldn't or they wouldn't quite touch you to be more specific, uh, since there's really no defining gender identity that you could tell. Um, would kind of just point a finger at your short sword. And, uh, you know, you'd, you'd not really look away, because you're, you're unsure, you don't know these people. Uh, but as the finger points, you just get a weird sense, like something's happened. You don't feel anything, you just kind of intuit it. So you quickly glance away down at your short sword, uh, and you recognize that, very suddenly, it has changed. Um, 
you know, your short sword that you had was was a faithful companion. It had been with you for a while, but that also means that it was relatively worn. You know, the wet, the leather binding uh, had some some wire on it. You know, on the hilt that that had been starting to fray and was starting to actually bug your hand a little. And there's surf, some surface rust on it and things. But what's there now is nothing like that. Uh, what's there now is actually a very elegant piece. Uh, the hilt is shimmering, uh, almost as if brand new. Um, the leather and and le and the wire binding on the hilt is gorgeous. It looks, you know, fantastically new as well. And as you just quickly draw the blade a little bit, you notice that um, it's got these kind of designs running down it that would make you realize that this is now a plus one magical short sword. Oh, do do we only get one of these? Like, how, how what? How many do we get? Uh, um, so I I can change change it to any of the uh, others if you want, but one one weapon, and if you want something else, I I might be able to provide it. Oh. At yeah, this I point, no Marino would also look at the other two just to to relieve some pressure on you, and would say, I can do the same for for you two. Whatever you need. And so, like, she would look at you specifically. Uh. Nook, nook, eh, nook, 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 canook. We're gonna call me nook. Or, 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 just go with Slaja, because that's definitely easier. But, um, if you decide, just when, when you do, feel free. Uh, but either way, nook, nook, Slaja, you would uh, notice that once again, this character kind of points towards the scimitar, the double-bladed scimitar that you you've been carrying along. Uh, no, and... no. When she when she asks me. I want to take mine out with a mouthful of food, right? Okay. I'm I'm stuffed full of like half of a chicken <laughs> in my mouth. Absolutely. Uh, and I'm gonna pull my scimitar out, and I'm gonna kind of slam it into the table on the corner so it sticks into the edge of the table, and just go with this mouthful full. I like I like that. Yeah. So as you go to slam it into the table, you would you would actually notice uh, surprisingly, it doesn't stick into the wood at all. The wood wood repels the blade, like without any issue, almost as if it was made out of metal. Uh, but regardless, once it kind of, you know, rests on the side of the table, you would see as as Marno points towards it, it just like the short sword would very quickly, the, the wear kind of disappears. All the wrappings and all the lavish designs on it just look as like they're brand new, and the blade just gains the blades, since it's double bladed, gain these uh, kind of um, majestic wisps that have these very interesting... Uh, it almost looks like, you know, since it's a the, the the short sword blade only came out so far, but this is exposed. You see that it almost looks like um, kind of long tendrils, uh, almost like as if someone would had done like um, a form drawing of like water, but instead of it just being like short lines, it goes down the whole length of the blade in this just like long extended piece. And there's these little flecks that look like stars, kind of throughout these lines. Um, and yeah, it very much so feels like a magical weapon. Uh, so, you know, you can kind of, you're, you're, you know, level, you're an experienced adventurer, so you can tell, you know what those are. Um, and you as well, Zachariah, if you have any weapons, I actually don't know what you're running with. I do have weapons, but it's, my dear, my dear, I'm not a fighter, but I do use weapons of a variety. Musical instruments in my game. If you have anything I could use, I'd appreciate it. Okay, that's very fair. Um... If you want to browse magical musical instruments with me quick, we can maybe come to a relatively quick consensus. All right, I've pulled up a list that's cool. on D&D Beyond. Uh, there's, of this list, there are, I think, only one that I'm actually compatible with. Which would be? The, uh, the Sly Liar, C-S-L-I Liar. Is that the one that... Oh, um, sorry, C-L-I Liar. There we go. Is that the one that... What's his name used, Fred? Uh, uh, oh. I can tell you in a minute what he had. There are others, but that's the only one I have as a proficiency. Yeah, no, sorry. It was C-L-I? Yeah, that. It's not coming up for me on D&D Beyond. I don't know why it wouldn't. Here, uh, I can link Yes, to that's the one that he had. Oh, if that's the case, I don't no, 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 no. It's one. totally fine. Um, it's totally okay. It actually just means that I. actually... That's the one that gives reference. fly invisibility, levitate. Yeah, I actually don't think that it's going to be too much shape, of an issue. Wall of fire. Okay. Yeah. Wall of wind. It, it's it's a lot of good utility spells that this you know if you find a way to use them in this then more power to you. It's a one shot. 
Okay. So uh, so you can use that instead of uh, a special, like a, a, a plus one weapon. Add that to equipment then. Yeah. Uh, do I need to attune to it, or it, do it's I just... automatically attuned to you? Yeah. Any anything that is given by Marano in this instance, in in this place, I should say, is automatically attuned to you. My God, it's a beauty. I Th promise I will try you. not to uh, scuff it up too much. Th thank you again. Do do you want anything different instead of the sh short sword, Chengis? Chengis? You said Chengis? 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 You? Chengis? That's me. Chengis. Short sword. Beautiful. Love it. Do you what? What? And anything else? Uh, da 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 da. Um. Do, do we only get to keep one? Keep, keep is an interesting term. You can use more, but not another weapon. So to clarify, if you have another magic item that you think you'd want to try and use, throw it at me. I'll say yes or no. All of you are going to get a magic, like a plus one weapon or another item, and then a second magic item. So like Chris has his Mariner's outfit, so he's got two. Uh, I've been trying to find the list of magic items that I used to have. I don't know where I saved it. Yeah. And Blake, uh, in your case, I know you don't know magic items super well. Mm -hmm. um, so we will just have Marno. Hmm. I swear to God, if it's another slug on top of my head. <laughs> I'm, just <laughs> doing a quick, I'm just doing a quick filter. Let's see, I'm going to find some stuff and see if throw things, a couple things at you. Um, where are you looking? I just pulled up the magic like items. Equipment? Yeah, magic items under uh, game rules. <clears throat> and I'm using the advanced filter to cut down to uncommons and rares. Just to be a little more fair, but... And now I'm going through a list of stuff for, like... Okay, I'm actually doing specifically better. armors right now, but you can go through whatever. So, Blake, I'll just tell you. You're given a set of armor called Serpent Scale Armor. Uh, it seems to be made from shimmering scales. It doesn't change your armor class at all. Um, okay. But if you increase your dexterity at all with your feats, um, it applies your your full dexterity modder to modifier to it. So right now your AC is like 15. So it's the mm -hmm. 14 of the scale mill plus one. If your dexterity goes up to plus two, you you will get it. Up, it'll goes up to 16. If your dexterity ends up at somehow um, plus three, it goes up to 17. The higher your dexterity goes, the higher your, your AC will be. Um, okay. So that's just kind of, you know, an item. Uh, I can't apply it to your character sheet, apparently, but, you know, at, at this point. And also, it makes it so you don't have disadvantage on stealth checks, which I don't think you did anyway. Or if you... Don't. Actually, you did, so that, that'll help oh. you. So you won't have disadvantage on stealth checks, which is nice. Nice. Anything else that you saw, Fred? Uh, can I get a deck of illusion? Fuck it. Go for it, buddy. Cool. <laughs> Sounds fun to me. All right, good. Let's move on. Uh, so as you guys finish eating, you find yourselves, you know, filled up nicely. Um, Marano's kind of pointed at you, and, and your gear has changed. You know, in your case, Chenkis, uh, the, the deck appeared on the table in front of you, and you were able to grab it and quickly, you know, s you know, hide it away. Um, you have your plus one short sword now as well. Um, we have uh, uh, new can yeah, new con new conk new conk man. I'm gonna. I'm gonna keep trying. Nukonk Slaja uh, fucking has got his plus one weapon and his new armor, and Godi's running with uh, his armor and his special liar now. Uh, so Gemini kind of looks out across all of you, uh, the glint in his uh, his his monocle ever so present uh, as he kind of radiates this joy that raises the hairs on the back of your neck even more, and he just. Well, it looks like all of you are ready to go. So, any last questions? Yeah, you still never tell me where you get the suit from. Hmm. I want to know what this table's made out of. Both great questions. The answer being I make my own suits and Gem uh, Marino makes the tables. With that... Hey, Vince, Christ. <laughs> he, he raises his, uh, his left hand. Or sorry, his right hand, I should say, um, in front of Maybe all of you. Maybe you should ask him for the suit. Yeah, there you go. Uh, he raises his right hand. Uh, yeah. 
Actually, you know what? If you're fast enough, you can. Do you want to ask him for a suit? <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Just headed to a party. We need to be appropriately dressed for the situation. My man over there needs a tux. I need a bright red flashy suit with a black bow tie and uh, looks at looks at um <laughs> at Chenkis. Nakan Nakanuk <laughs> at Chenkis. Uh, uh, oh me. Yeah, yeah. He, he needs was... he needs a suit, but he also needs a mask made of the same material that envelope was. <laughs> <laughs> Just a void what? instead what? of your face. What? Huh? Huh? I don't what do I what do I need a mask for? So, so people are drawn to you and ask questions. You 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 say all that and you watch you actually would notice um that Marino looks over at Gemini just kind of quizzically. And Gemini for the first time uh well not even the first time actually, you guys have been feeling him kind of get get joyful at your actions so far. Uh this I think is the first time all of you have heard this, um as you know, members of the Mysterium. But you watch as his shoulders start to heave and he just radiates this noise. And then Sir, you having a stroke? He uh, he simply nods at Marino, who once again points at all three of you. Uh, they start with you, Zachariah, and you get that suit just like just like Gemini's. It is uh, this Merlot-colored suit with a Merlot top hat. It you still have your armor on underneath. You could tell that this is kind of an illusion, but it's a very good illusion. Uh, and then just like you asked, a, a tuxedo seems to appear on uh, Nukan Nukunk Slaja. And uh, the same thing, you give, you get Chenkis a nice outfit, and then like this weird mask just drapes down from the top of his head. That is a a black cloth that seems to absorb light. Uh, and strangely what? enough, Chenkis, huh? you seem to be able to see through this illusion as if it like you you can tell it's there, but it does not impede your vision in any way, shape, or form. It's as if it wasn't. Oh. I don't get yeah, it. Why? 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 Don't worry, don't worry. It'll make sense later when I figure out what I'm gonna use it for. <laughs> You don't, you don't already know? No one usually, what? The key to any plan is to make it up as you go. Beautiful. Uh, are we going then? Can we get Can we get the plan? What's the plan? The plan is, ask me in five minutes. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, you know, Gemini, you know, kind of recovers. His, his shoulders stop heaving and he just, Well, it sounds like you are all ready to go. So on three... One, two, and with a loud snap, all of you, your vision fades to black for just a moment, and you find yourselves backwards. coming in on a uh, ballroom. Hello, Kim. And uh, so the the all of you can will find yourself um, kind of at these double doors that are at the very bottom of this mat, if you look all the way at the south. Uh, the doors are closed behind you, but you kind of hear this sound before your vision returns that sounds like a uh, a door closing and and like not necessarily a lock but almost like a a board slid into place uh and as you turn around and like see these double doors you you very much can assume that it was them that you heard uh but in front of you you pretty much just see a party in a sizable ballroom uh there's a handful of people that are positioned sporadically across the room, none of them seemingly willing to breach the walls of, of silence that have kind of formed between each of these respective groups. You basically, you know, you've been told nothing. You can tell that it is supposed to be a party. There's music playing. Uh, you know, if you look all the way to the north of the map, it's a big map, but there's like this this ball, this big stage. Um, the, the curtains in the back there are um, kind of not necessarily closed per se. like. They are shuttered in a way that stops light from coming into the room, but there is still a, an assortment of musicians in front of it, in front of them, I should say, that are playing music. Uh, but yeah, you see, most of the windows are, are kind of shuttered. Uh, this whole place is lit by by firelight and candlelight to try and you would assume kind of give this like nighttime ball kind of atmosphere. Uh, and you see what you would see, what you you kind of very quickly realize is um, these like four main groups of people. Uh, you know, there's two that are closer to you, separated into, you know, the left side of the room and the right side of the room, uh, around two different couples. Uh, straight ahead of you, below the balcony, you notice another couple surrounded by people, and then up on the balcony is a fourth couple surrounded by people. Uh, and that's basically all that you can see at first glance, and it's all you're aware of right now. Uh, this, this, this is not a good place for me. I, I don't belong here. I don't belong here. It's, it's a little... uh, this is what I got the mask for. It's a little rich for my blood. Has it, has it been five minutes? It is not, but I've fed oh. my dragon. 
Here, uh -oh. Excuse me. You found a dragon? I have dragon? Deep. I don't want to be here for a dragon. <clears throat> yeah, where's that band playing? I gotta get them to play a better tune. Yeah, so Place. the band would be all the way in the the back uh, at the you know top of the balcony if you were truly wishing to talk to them. So they're up these staircases by the curtain up there? Uh, they are up these staircases and then this this big curtain here okay. is where the band is that so it's i would you would notice especially zachariah being someone who is a bard you they're 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 you know a, uh, you've, you've done performances you've been to performances um these curtains are, are kind of shuttered in a weird way because they're closed but they're pulled kind of back to the back of the stage and it basically looks like it's done in a way to stop any any light leaking in from behind the curtains to stop like to keep this kind of dim atmosphere that the room has it wants to be a rave but it's feeling like a goddamn funeral all right and then um let's do this just to you know we're going to do a kind of my traditional give everyone give me a, an initiative roll um you know we'll do it now and it's not going to be too strict it's just to kind of have an order for when people want to do stuff okay make sure i'm selecting him this guy over there not a typical uh, character. Did that show up over the 19? Yeah, they did. You're good. Okay. Yes, sir. Because uh, the numbers are just different on them. So, okay. so we're going to go I don't know in why order it's of though. alphabetical. Let me check you have this. a. Yeah, if you go to the bottom um, below your where you send messages, there's a box that you can select which character you want to send. I have to. the other one sent. Or the other one, yeah, selected. Is. I don't know if that's because I clicked it on D&D &D Beyond. Maybe. I don't know. Regardless. Oh, actually, yes, it is, because it says Blake test below it. That's okay. still works perfect. So A15. Wait, you can link D&D Beyond to Roll20 now? Yeah, there's some way to do it. It's an app I think you have to install. Uh -oh. It's an extension off extension of Google. I don't remember do. which one it is. Wow, I cool. I don't, I don't know. I did the nice. Harrison must have done that for me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that allows us to keep order. Uh, and Zachariah is first anyway, so you're good. Um, so yeah. You go ahead and you can saunter across the room if you want. If you want your first action to be that you you know you go up to the band, you can make the distance. I'm not I'm not locking us into like movement too much right now. It was just to kind of have a uh, an orderly approach to when people do what. Hmm. I'm trying to go up to this group of people if I can. Yeah, absolutely can. I'll walk up to them and just once they notice me, just be like. Uh, do you do anything to make them notice you? Uh, I mean, or, I would definitely. An alternative? Like... Are you trying to hide from them? No. Okay. No, not at all. I'm, I, if anything, I'm trying to be noticed by these people, so I kind of put myself definitely in their line of sight, uh, directly in front, and then I'm going to kind of look at the one closest to me and just be like, uh, "What, what is going on here?" Yeah. So they don't actually notice you at all. Um, but as you, so as you approach, you kind of actually hear most of them are talking in kind of hushed voices. They're not. It's not. You know, the the room is still loud. You still hear people talking as a general. You know, it's just the way that parties are. But these people don't seem to be talking in a way that they want anyone else to overhear. Um, the small crew seems kind of frightened. Uh, they're talking about recent events more than anything. Uh, and you hear something about mutilated animals and people going missing before you kind of just are like, hello, how's, how's it going? Uh, and then they, they all kind of quickly change subject and, and turn to look at you, and, and one of them kind of speaks out quickly, and it's just a gentleman, and, uh, hello, um, I, what do you, are, are you new in town? We don't, I don't recognize you. Just arrived today. Oh, well, well, welcome. We always, we always love having new folk into town. Um, I guess you couldn't have picked a, a better time, uh, you know, the, the harvest ball being today, so, um, what, yeah, uh, well, welcome. What was that about mutilated animals I heard? Uh, it's, uh, uh he kind of looks at the rest of the crew, uh, like the, the group around him. And, no um, need to be shy. Do me a, do me a persuasion roll. Peace. 22. Awesome. Yeah, so when you say no need to be shy, he kind of, he looks at you and he's like, well, alright, I guess if you're, if you're going to be moving, in, if you are, if you have moved into town, like, yeah, it's only fair that you, you be, be warned. Um, so... Yeah, just there's been weird stuff kind of been going on lately, and we've no one's really figured it out, and we're just you know we're all kind of scared. We some of the the, the farmers and and even some pets, uh, you know, the, the the animals were mutilated, but it wasn't like they took the 
the meat or anything, it looked like. They just, they were torn apart, just left to rot. And, um, I mean, people have just, they've been going missing for the last couple months. And, I, I don't know, just weird stuff, man. It sucks. Creatures are sport killing now. Well, we'd love to say that, but I'm. At least if it was creatures, you'd assume that there'd be chew marks or they'd eat the meat, right? But it's just torn out throats and lots of slashes like claws and fangs, but nothing, nothing like eaten. Interesting. And no one's gone to deal with this. Well, no. Of course, we're trying to deal with it, but no, no one knows what's causing it yet. Um. Well, here. Uh, um. And he will actually take and like kind of grab your shoulder in the way that like you know he pulls pulls himself up next to you to make sure that you can see where he's pointing with his arm and um he points you to so at the top of the screen you should see um below the balcony or no i'm sorry not below the balcony he he's the guy on the left so the left party nearby you uh the the characters who have the red dots um mm -hmm. he points you in that direction uh and he tells you uh, that 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 dwarf, uh, he's he's Lord uh, Lord Augustus Hebernon, so he he's been here for a while. Um, he kind of like he, he like leads the village's militia, but he's kind of taken it upon himself to figure it out because he wants to protect people. So he he's trying. Lord Augustus, you say? Yep. Very well. I will talk with him. Awesome. So then let's switch over to. Um, our good friend Chenkis instead. Give him a good little chance at running it here. What are you looking to do on your your group, Chenkis? Uh, I just want to, uh, I just want to like eavesdrop. I mean, I'm I'm short. I'm four, four <laughs> five here. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm, <laughs> I'm quite yeah. a little guy. I'm just kind of like, you know, yeah, absolutely getting in between a little so few people here. So just do this for me. Do do a stealth roll, and this will just determine, you know, like how close you can get to them without people even really noticing that you're worming your way through and all that. Awesome. So, um, 18 is beautiful. Yeah. So, especially with these people being, you would know, all of you would know, relative, like, rel readily. The people in this room are actually mostly commoners. Like, you all are are almost overdressed. Um, Chenkis, you would see these these red dotted people though as you get closer, are very much um, dressed as well as you guys. They they are dressed a, a step above as well. Uh, but everyone else is just commoners that seem to be dressed with like their best clothing. And you can tell it's it's nice, but it's not quite the same as like these people who are clearly kind of nobles or upper class. Um, and you would just kind of most of the people around these two, um, since you're eavesdropping, are are telling you not telling you, but are are saying to them, uh, asking them things about you know basically the same thing that um, that our friend uh, Slaja is learn is asking about or learning, I should say, same stuff he's learning. Um, where they're like, you know, what are you going to do about this? Have you made any headway? You know, what's what's been going on? We all don't feel safe. You know, we're glad that we're all together here because at least it's a night that we can feel safe together. But, like, how are we supposed to go back home and sleep after? You know, we don't blah, blah, blah. Uh, and for the most part, um, you would see it's, it's a dwarf who is talking to most people. Uh, and his wife seems to be helping, or at least he would, he would looks like his wife. It's a woman who stands kind of hip to hip with him and is turned to people that he's not and is trying her best as well to kind of soothe the crowd. But the dwarf is the one who's answering questions for the most part. She's just like, all in good time, all in good time. Um, he, he's answering as much as he can. He seems to be really trying to soothe these people's worries. And he's saying things like, I'm, I swear I'm looking into it. I, I've, I've, been, I've seen everybody that has come up, whether it's been cow or fox or human, I'm, I swear to you all, I will I will make this town safe. I will keep this town safe, you know. And he seems to be trying his best to soothe people. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to... Yeah, when I hear this, uh, do, you, do, you have, do you have somebody going after? Do you have a, do you have a lead? Of course, yes. No, well, um, I, I, I am after them myself, and, and I will find them. Uh, we, I definitely have a most certain lead. Uh, I will tell you now, I don't believe that the cause of this is any sort of beast, but rather something more monstrous. But it is nothing that will be outside my purview to be able to conquer. You're, you're going to conquer by yourself? By Me yourself? and the militia, of course, but um, well, I will lead the way. I will not. I never make my men face something that I would not face myself, as I have always promised. Who is asking these questions? I recognize not your voice. And he starts looking around, and uh, he doesn't actually quite see you, but you can. He's the first person that's actually started to try and find you. 
no longer going to say anything else. Yep, no I'm problem. I'm going to keep, like, keep if I need to hide again, I'm, I'm going to hide again, but I'm going to, yeah, just keep listening. Perfect. Okay, so um, Zechariah, we'll go back to you for a sec. You you head into the band still? What's what's the plan here? Uh, he is going to continue strutting forward, and uh, he will do so until he gets about to here. Will he will lock eyes or he will gaze upon the lady in red and be like, "Ooh la la, what have we here?" So the red dress, not the red dot. Just to make sure I understand. The lady in red. Yes. Gotcha. Perfect. Okay. So, uh, just to set that scene a little, um, uh, yeah, so she actually, you know, as you're passing by people, you're looking, you're scanning the room, you're Zachariah Fish, you look for pretty ladies, and even looking at, like, the lady up on the balcony and the people that are surrounded, this woman is far more beautiful than anyone else in the room, and her lavish red dress just complements that beauty in a way that, like, her pale white skin with a little bit of blush on the cheeks is, is you know, accented ever more so by this dress, and she just is, she looks absolutely, she is sex in a dress, you know, you are, you are smitten. So, yeah, go for it. Oh, I I moved to this point. Am I allowed to move further? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, you can. Yeah. We're not we're not super locked to movement. It's more about okay. what you're trying to do in your individual sections, and then we'll switch okay. around. Mademoiselle, if you do not mind me coming forward, I must say you are absolutely ravishing. Uh oh, that um, she kind of blinks her eye, eyes at you, almost like a, a deer in headlights, you know, a stunned doe, uh, and she kind of taps the hand of the man next to her, who turns and looks at you. Uh, and he kind of glares down his, his nose at you. Uh, he's, uh, I'm assuming Zechariah is, what, 5'10 at most? Uh, I think I'm actually shorter than that. I think I'm closer to 5'7. Yeah, 5'7. Yeah, right. yeah. So, so my point is I knew he was not super tall to begin with. Uh, this guy is like 6'6". Like six, six. You know, he, he definitely is tall, even for Quick, a yeah. human. I get that. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So he's he's looks down at you with it kind, of, kind of divisively and, and is just... Would you stay away from my wife? It is a bit disconcerting that we're letting people in now who are just going to brazenly take swings at occupied women. Good sir, am I not allowed to compliment the lady's majesty? Sir, even I can tell you are undressing her with your eyes, and I literally have never noticed any of the men she's complained about doing that before. You know, honestly, it's a crime that people don't do that. Again, have you? You're married to her. You should know, ma'am. I mean, no offense. You know what? It's I all right, apologize. Sweetie. I think I understand the type this one is now. I was worried at first, but I can handle it. And she bats her eyelids at you and just. So it was just a compliment, then? Hey. Yes, it was, ma'am. No worries in that case. Because I would tell you that if you were to try and take another swing, a real one, it would be impossible. This man saved my life, and no cheap cologne-smelling skunk of a man is going to sway my heart. Better be wound me. I don't wear cologne. And she just, like, scrunches her nose <laughs> Oh God, that's her your natural musk. <coughs> oh God, it, it it is. Like pulls a handkerchief out and she like takes a and pulls a perfume bottle out and spritz it into the handkerchief a couple times. Puts the perfume bottle away and just shoves it up at her face. It's like, sir, please leave me alone. As you wish, madam. Have a nice evening, sir. God damn, you scored. Yes. Well, thank you. I think. Okay. Looks over the shoulder coyly. Yeah, got her. <laughs> She's just like retching into the uh, the, the, ha the the handkerchief still. Uh, regardless, we were gonna we're gonna go back to uh, let's try it again. New Canuck, Slaj, Slaja. There we go. Misread the last Hell one yeah. this time. Uh, <laughs> what are you looking to do next, my dude? Uh, I want to move through this crowd. Yeah, so as you're moving through the crowd, you'd probably be the only one who notices Chenkis because his mask really his mask really stands out to you as someone who you know like saw it before. Um, so you kind of pass him and see see him listening in, and then you walk up uh, to the front of the line. Uh, and much like him, you kind of hear them just soothing people. Uh, but he actually notices you since you are much 
like before a, a new face uh, and someone wearing a tux, which is kind of stand out as well. Uh, Tower, so, towering over everyone else that's there. Yeah, he looks over. He's like, hello. Um, okay, uh, so you're new to town. How, how can I help you? Hopefully it's not the same as them. I've been told that you are the one to talk to about what's happening here. Are you some sort of a lawman or an expert on finding criminals? I, I, I don't... I've been known to keep my town safe of these problems. Oh, well, I, that is uh, most certainly good to hear, if that's the case. Um, y yes, we have had issues. Um, what have you uh, been informed of so far? The mutilated animals, people disappearing, mm, no trophies or meat taken, I've heard. I see. Um... Let me speak to you for a moment. And he, he quickly kind of locks eyes with the woman next to him and says, Dear, if you wouldn't mind, just give us a, a little bit of space. And she nods her head. Of course, honey. And she kind of walks over and he walks back and waves you over. And you kind of walk over this way. And the the woman just kind of keeps people at a fair distance from you guys. You know, anyone that walks forward that's like, I, I have a question to ask, I have a question to ask. She's just, it's okay, you can ask next. You'll be after that. You'll be third in line. You know, and she's keeping order. Uh, and he pulls you in close, and he says, Sir, do you have any experience in hunting monsters? I want to just pull my sleeves up and show him the various scars that Absolutely. are across my forearms. He, he nods you're trying almost, to kill yourself? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, <laughs> he, nods he doesn't know. <laughs> no, no, he nods approvingly. He actually sees that there's, like, you know, different... Punct, uh, puncture marks, marks from bites and claw marks and scratches from you know beasts of all sorts, and uh, he he's impressed and nods at you as you know as, as such, and just oh, this is exactly what we needed. Okay, um, yeah, so we've actually had bodies turn up, and um, there's a um, well, they're always drained of their blood, meat isn't eaten, bones aren't chewed, but no blood. That's worrisome, right? Because it seems to be to me. Worrisome, yes. Uh, unless someone was trying to dye a lot of clothes, or perhaps <laughs> that is morbid, and I don't wish to think further. Oh, I'm just gonna. Man. I'm gonna look over the crowd at the lady in the red dress. <laughs> <laughs> and he, then... he follows your gaze and just goes, "Good sir, a no." And B, if actually that was to be what happened, I'm pretty sure the dress would be brown by now. When was the last body found? Oh, gosh. Not long ago. Uh, less than a 10-day, but I couldn't honestly remember. Uh... So, back to you then, sir. One, it would still be fresh on her dress. And two, <laughs> all I need to know is which direction to go. Uh, that's partially the problem. We don't know. Uh, We're holding this no one... party to celebrate the harvest <laughs> because, really, it's kind of a way to bring people's spirits up while we continue to look. No one has seen anything? Just the corpses. And what have you done to try and solve this? I have stationed my troops as guards. We are really only a militia, but... For a small town like this, it serves as enough of a... We patrol. We are guardsmen. But Scouts. We don't really have the men to spare, which is why I'm glad you're here. I understand. <sighs> All right, so do this for me. Um, it's going to be the last thing for now, and then we'll switch to someone else. Uh, I need to check your sheet quick. One sec. Um, I need you to do me a history check with advantage... 13. Okay, so 13 is not as great as I was hoping for, but it's still good enough that it'll help you here. Um, so what you realize with what information you've learned so far uh, is you think it is very likely that some sort of an undead creature is causing this harm. Well, from what you've told me and the things I've seen, it's quite possible you're dealing with something that's not quite... Alive in this world, I would say. What isn't quite water, but isn't quite earth. <laughs> Quick sand. <laughs> so uh, he just says, frightening, terrifying. 
hopefully you'll be able to help. And then we're going to switch back to uh, Chenkis. And actually, am I... Uh, actually, I have you two flipped, so next round we'll correct that. But for now, Chenkis, it is your turn. Um... I'm assuming I can't hear it. That's that's why you. No, you. Them aside. So okay. So actually, here we'll do this. Um, just do me a perception check. A perception. Yeah, and we'll see if you were able to hear all that or not. Well, we know the lady in red passed the undead Perfect. chest. She gagged in my smell. <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't. She hasn't passed the blood. All right. So test. with a thirteen, you weren't <laughs> able to make out the full conversation. But I will say, um, it seemed to me like uh, Nukanuk wasn't exactly being as quiet as uh, Alexander yeah. was, or Augustus, I should say, was here. So That's you, you heard say. more about of what he was saying, for sure, uh, especially about the undead part. Yeah. But you didn't quite make out the full conversation. You probably didn't hear the thing about the drained blood um, or most of what, uh, you know, Augustus was saying. Okay. Um, I'm I'm going to walk over here then after after hearing all of that. Yep, absolutely. So as you approach up there... Let me go to the right people. Uh, stealth into this group, too. Okay. Another 18. There, mm. we got the... Consistency. Yeah. Which is horrible, because I rolled a 5. Great. So, well, yeah. Welcome so... to the power of the rogue. You <laughs> fart in the room, and everyone blames the other guy in the corner. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're kind of right. Um, so, yeah, so as you're kind of sneaking up and, and through, uh, you just notice that this group seems to be much more bombastic than the last one that you were in uh, mostly heralded by the the man in the middle uh, he's dressed to the nines he actually has a whole bunch of like pins and stuff that seem to be noting some sort of something but you can't quite see from this distance they don't look like military pins to you which you definitely would have seen you've seen enough soldiers in your life but it's it's like it's almost like he was given accolades of some sort from the town maybe right you can't quite tell but uh, he's talking very loud, he's very bombastic in action, and you would notice he has a penchant to kind of wander off towards the ladies in the crowd and chat with them, kiss their hands, bat his eyes at them, give them compliments, and as he's doing so, the woman that's left behind uh, is often talking to gentlemen who seem very stern-faced, uh, and, and, you know, when you're hearing the conversations, it's, it's a lot of people asking about the dangers that they might be in, much like the other group. And she seems to be, you know, answering very seriously, uh, you know, well, yes, of course, August is doing what he can, and, you know, we, we are most certainly supporting them in every way we can. Uh, she's she's much more fielding the actual questions and, and handling what seems to be more work side. Um, but yeah, uh, and as she does that, she's kind of glaring at her, who you would believe is a husband. Do, 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 do you have somebody to kill the undead? Uh, both of them would kind of look to the crowd and look for who asked that question and just man asks first what what was that i what and the woman's i'm not sure what you're saying but i know what kill 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 the creature killing the people so yeah they're definitely scanning for you at this point so i'm gonna do two rolls one for each of them see if either of them can see who is saying this uh neither of them seem to be identif able to identify you right away uh, however, I will tell you, it looks like the man is looking towards roughly where you are in the crowd. He's just, you can tell, can't see you. It, and they don't respond to the second? Inquiry. No, they don't actually. Uh, they Their brows are kind of furrowed, and people are kind of whispering among themselves now. And they're just looking to see who asked that question. They, basically, <laughs> it looks like they won't answer until they can answer directly to you, is yeah. maybe the better way for you to, to understand the situation. Yeah, so he, he clears his, Chinkus clears his throat. He goes... Is, is there a reward for capturing the culprit? <laughs> so do me, um, I'll let you choose between performance or deception, your choice, because I don't know if he's doing it as a actor or if he's doing it as a lie, just trying to cover himself, you know, it's, I feel like you can kind of have different mentalities behind that action. Oh, yes! Fuck That's yes. Awesome. So he's like, the, the man goes, I, uh, I swear to God we have never heard anyone like that in this village. And I'm pretty sure the noise came from right there. People part. And as he says that, he points and these people move. And uh, you're kind of caught out in the open now. And he very much can tell that you were the one that asked. Uh, but he narrows his eyebrows and he says, If you believe that you are capable of stopping these fiends, whatever they may be, then yes, I will reward you. And he actually looks out at the women in the crowd as he says that, kind of looking for acknowledgement. 
the same ones that he was kind of flirting with before. I, I, it, are you are are you saying you're going to reward us with women from the village? Uh, what do you, um, what? No, that would be their choice. If you truly can make yourselves heroes of the village, like me. And his wife actually kicks him in the back of one of his knees when he says that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. I wish to roll perception. How powerful are her thighs when she kicks? <laughs> Go for it. Roll <laughs> perception. Wearing a dress. That's why he needs good perception. So with an eleven, uh, all you see is is that the skirt kind of flutters. But you think it's a pretty powerful flutter. I mean, the guy's knee, like, you can't tell if he's actually really weak, uh, or maybe his gut's just too big, or if she is uh, exceptionally strong. It's kind of tough to tell. He's stroking his realize. chin as if I deep in realize. thought, not looking at anything in particular. So if people catch his gaze, it's just he's in the nothing box thinking. <laughs> okay. He's staring into midair. All right, so that's Zachariah's action, I guess. Uh, so let's do it the right way this time. We're going to go back to Chenkis for now, and then we will do uh, Slaja. That's the proper order. Uh, right? Yeah, yeah. So Chenkis, you're uh, I was just I was just reacting to the kick. I was still yeah, getting Oh, you wanted to get Okay, I'm sorry. Then that's, If that's the case, feel free. I thought that you were, that was like, when you said you were staring into space, I thought you were saying that you were ending what you wanted to do. My no, that was just his cover in case someone was like, "Dude, what are you looking at?" It's like, oh, "Okay, okay, gotcha." Sorry, my mistake. But no, I'm I'm still headed for the I'm still headed for the bards. Like, your music sucks. <laughs> go for it. That's totally fine. So yeah, um, you, you don't have to keep to the thirty feet. You can just go up and do that. It's fine. Oh, okay. Well, then I will get up to the the, the where the bards are. And like, you got room for one more. This party needs to be spiced up somewhat. Uh, I, uh, what? I, uh, and just like the guy who's kind of on. The front man position just looks at you and I I don't I get uh, I guess so and he looks past the crowd at the green dot guy and he kind of like motions towards you and he like motions an instrument motion and shrugs his shoulders and the the guy in the group with the green dot looks past the people and like holds his hands out wide like what the fuck are you asking me for just waves his hands at him like deal with the problem and so the musician shrugs and. Yeah, he says you can play, I guess, so go ahead, come on and join us. All right, I get this. We're going to just drop it to E minor and bring it up a pig. And we are going to play the medieval version of Toxicity. Yeah, and I will uh, I'll probably put uh, titles in, in the videos, of course, but yeah. So you go ahead and start playing that. The whole party it's kind in, of... It's in the, the, the yeah, message board for those who wish to listen. Uh, the whole party kind of uh, gets a bit confused but they don't necessarily dislike it and the fact that it is something different really kind of you see some people actually starting to kind of like attempt to dance and stuff it's still an awkward party but yeah they, you know more happening than not or they love me before. okay um so yeah with that we'll go to check now i'm assuming that's enough for you um check so anything really quick? and go to uh knock first you want to go to him first yeah that's fine yeah thanks yeah. Okay. So go ahead. Uh, you can go instead, Blake. Did I hear the conversation between these two from where I was? Um. Yeah. Once you walked over, so you would have heard the thing about the reward part, probably not the undead part, but the re the reward question and answer. And I saw her kick him because he uh, yes. after he called him. So. Yeah. Okay. Then I I want to look up uh, after walking walking across here and just be. Uh, what makes you the hero? I, I have long supported this town and its people, and will continue to do so. And what have you done to help with what's going on now? Why, well, I, I am the, the champion of the people. I, I'm protecting everybody by making sure that I'm a, a good lord and, and my job gets done. And uh, it's at this point the woman next to him kind of rolls her eyes and she looks at you and she just raises a gentle finger and kind of think, you know, motions you to come a little closer to her instead. Ma'am. Uh, and she just kind of points you over to her, her side over this way. Uh, even further. Yeah. And so once you're kind of a little bit behind where the crowd is, she just turns and she covers her face. She actually pulls like a, a little fan out. And she undoes it and covers her mouth so that the crowd can't quite see it. And she says just under her breath to you, I get his work done. Ignore him. If you need a reward when you complete whatever it is that 
has just been promised. I will be the one to set it up, so if you have questions, just ask me. If we do partake in this quest or task of yours, we would need some upfront for outfitting. I am assured of my two friends I have brought would also need things from your town before we embark. Oh, I... You know, the husband's still listening, and he's kind of confused, and the wife kind of, like, glares at him again to shut him up. I can't promise anything. You can buy whatever you can from the village. We operate as normal, but nothing will open again until tomorrow morning. So, whatever you have now, if you can use it to help us now, do so. If not, then help us when you can help us. What about horses, at least? Again, you can purchase them, but I can't help with give. I'm not giving them away. We have a town to run. We still have an economy here. So you want us to save you, but... No, I promised a reward if you saved us. However you do so is up to you. I understand. Very well. And then I'm just going to uh, saunter away. I don't think that was supposed to be there. Um, okay, so you saunter away. In that case, going back to Chenkis. He might still be doing what he's doing. Actually, before you walk away... Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... Let me check something quick. She would ask if you have talked with Augustus. She says he has more knowledge and can help you in that regard. Um, and she would actually inform you that if you truly are here to help uh, and wish to see any of the bodies, the man uh, with the blue dot, she points to him and says that he's actually a doctor and he kind of has been doing um, the autopsies, aut autopsies and things. So if you need further information in that regard, he might be able to help you. Uh, and then she also fills you in that the man on the balcony is kind of the head of the town. So if he actually really needs things given to them or special permissions or things like that, that man would be the one who can help you guys the most. She kind of is very down to the business, so she's able to at least inform you of certain things like that. And she introduces herself as Maud before you walk away and says, if you need anything else, let me know. Okay. Well, then once again, uh, ma'am. And then I'll kind of walk away. But as I do, because now I'm going to walk straight out this way, I am going to look over my shoulder and kind of size up uh, the guy with her. Um, yeah, so he's really, he just looks like an overweight noble. You actually think he probably wouldn't put up much of a fight, if at all. Perfect. Uh, I do want to come and tell Chinkus on my way past, because I'd like to end up at this Dr. Blue guy. Uh, to ask, uh, what was the guy on the balcony's name again? It was not given to you. Um, mm. Actually, it would that's, have been. I'm sorry. I don't fine. know why. I don't know why I'm thinking that. It would have been given to you. She's trying to give you information. Uh, Gis Lane. Yes, Lane. <clears throat> so I tell Chinkas. Um, uh, they're they're not going to help, but if they do, the guy on the balcony. What, Yen, what did you say it was? Gisling? Yeah, Gisling. G-Y-S-L-A-N-E. Gisling up there is, might give us horses or something if we do choose to do this. I'm going to go ask the man whose wife was accosted by our other friend uh, what he knows about the bodies. Okay. You know. At least we'll know something before we head off. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so at this point, let's go to Chenkis or an action before you do another interaction with yeah. someone. Just go um, you can walk yeah. over there, that's fine. All right, whatever he had to say. No, no, do, no. do we have the name of this nobleman in front of us, the yellow? Um, you do not. Apparently. I don't think it was given. To... Okay. Was not, no. So I'm, I'm going to look at him. Obviously, he probably can't see my face because of the mask for some reason I'm wearing. <laughs> um, you can take <clears> it off, by the way. It's just an illusion. Oh, oh like, yeah. I, if I you fake removing it, it will actually come off. Um, at the, uh, okay. good, sir. good, good, sir. good, sir. I could, could you turn around? There's someone behind you. You're saying that to the yellow dot? Yeah. Okay. So do a persuasion. Uh, 20 oh, yeah. <laughs> so he, you are so convincing that he spins on his heel. He says, what, 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 who, why did someone sneak up on me? What is happening? I, huh? So and he's, he's as soon as he spins around, I'm going to throw a, a card from the deck of many things, or deck of illusions, to okay. right behind him here. Behind um, him? Sorry, click it again? Yeah, so when he okay. spins around, that's when I'm going to throw it. Throw it, right? gotcha. 
Okay, so if you want to throw this stealthily, uh, do me a slight sure. of hand check. Yeah. I think makes sense. This is just to see if other people around you notice. Beautiful. Great roll. Right. Okay, so uh, yeah, so uh, I think you have to roll for what comes out, but go right ahead. Yeah, so I, I have a generator uh, from online, so I, okay. I just click in and it'll tell me which card I pull. Yep. Uh, I pulled an Ace of Diamonds and a Beholder appears behind <laughs> It, now, I, the deck of illusions, though, is just fake, right? Yes. Oh, everything yeah. is just fake. That's yes. what I thought. Okay, so yeah. So the Beholder will suddenly pop up. Oh, what a great color. So... Is this a creature or something I can look at on D&D Beyond? Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Just uh, type into the uh, the creatures thing, or the uh, the monster tracker, and you want to look for the Beholder. Perfect. <laughs> Ned Flanders, one of the badass. <laughs> what is <laughs> Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to find. <laughs> it's got fucking tentacles and shit, right? <laughs> oh my god. Oh man. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's 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 a beholder, and uh, it's there, and can, uh, he can, turns. Can you kill it for us? It's he, it's a monster. He, can you kill it? So he he shrieks and, like a little girl. <laughs> That's my sin. Holy shit, what the hell is that? And he just like starts booking it backwards as fast as he can. He's just like stumbling over himself. And people are like trying to get out of the way, of course. They're all running. And uh yeah, his his wife um is there a, is there a DC for noticing this? Yeah, it's um 15 intellect. His wife is uh, investigation. Only, his wife's the only one who who will actually try and roll it. Uh, she's the one I think might actually have a chance at it. Uh, nope, but she rolls too low, so she's going to also panic, and she, like, looks for her husband and starts trying to run after him, um, and, uh, yeah, everyone just kind of continues to run away, and, of course, the party kind of comes to a sudden halt as, uh, this <laughs> beholder is now in the middle of the room. The musicians stop playing, the two are at the top of the balcony, are freaking out as well, and they're trying to tell, uh, the people behind them to run to cover, um, the guy in with the red dot, uh, he actually sees, you know, he looks across the room. The first thing he, do, he does is steps in front of his fiance, uh, or, you know, none of you know that, but um, she, you know, quickly says something to him. Not that any of you would say, see or know what it is. And she starts running with people, uh, you know, the people that are around them in the other direction, uh, kind of guiding them towards the door. Uh, and he immediately starts running forward uh, towards this beholder. Uh, he, I look he doesn't, at, okay, he, doesn't yeah, he doesn't have any weapons or anything, but he runs and he's going to jump at it and he's just going to try and swing at it. Uh, is there anything about what happens if someone tries to interact with the illusion? Uh, appears real size, appropriate size, behaves as if it's a real creature, can't do any harm. Um, a physical interaction with the illusionary creature reveals it to be an illusion because objects pass through it. Through it, okay. Yeah, so what he would do is... Um, Kind of as he's running, he's he just. I will protect everyone. This is my village. None of you will be harmed. And he launches himself into the air. And although he kind of doesn't really think he can do much, um, as soon as he collides with this thing, he stumbles, falls to the ground, and like literally rolls head over heels into the wall. But uh, you know, it becomes illusory as as he does so, and uh, he kind of stands up, dusts himself off, and just walks back. And what is what is happening? What is this? Uh, so I guess the question is, does it actually disappear, or is it? Does he it's just, just know it's a? So a I'm going to say that when he went through it, it kind of turned like opaque and see through. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone saw that effect, and then when he came out, it's back to what it was, and it's still like acting, but everyone now knows that it was an illusion that saw that. But it's um, still there for for current. I'd say they just know it's not necessarily real. Yeah. Chris, I know you you were gonna say something before. Yeah. I don't. Know. Oh no! I, well, I I was gonna say that I was just wanted to look at you and uh, chink us and be like, yours. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Mine? Where? Whose? What? When? Where's? Wise? I assume that that's yours. Damn. Okay, I'm not close enough. All right. No. Um. In that case, wait, we no, will wait. we will ask um, Zachariah. Do you have anything you want to do? Uh. Yes. With that distracted, I'm going to use prestidigitation mm -hmm. to make the gentleman with the green dot look like he pissed himself. <laughs> nice. Okay. I mean, yeah. 
So you make uh, his pants kind of darken there. Yeah, because I, I can instantly clean or soil an object no larger than one cubic foot. Yeah, His okay. pants are browned. Yeah, you just kind of... I, I would say that what happens is, like, moisture from the air just kind of gathers in his pants slightly, making it, uh, you know, like, wet, dirty, mm -hmm. um, right, yeah, right at the crotch level. And he kind of looks down and pats himself a little and then quickly takes and covers his, his lower body with his cloak, just kind of, like, pulls it tight around him. And he, like, leans over to the lady next to him and, like, whispers something to her. And uh, with that, he actually goes to saunter off. And he tries to move past you. What's up? Better be my, safe. My dear lady, it seems that I may have soiled myself. Uh, I must uh, return to the bedroom and change. He tries and... to wander off this way. Um, anything else that you want to do, Zachariah? Um, he'll move up next to the lady. My God. You see what happened? What is that thing? I know not. I'm just glad that Sir Augustus was here. Um, as you saw, he faced the danger head on as he is apt to, and thankfully proved it. I guess fake. I can't. Yeah, I guess. I've never seen anything like that before in my life. Zagaray Fish. Hope you're enjoying the music. Oh, um, Popper Temple. And yes, I mean we were the ones who hired them. Although that last song was a little different from what we've heard. Oh no, that, that, that was me. I asked if they could, uh, if they had a spot to play in. I, I'm a wandering minstrel. Oh well, yes, it was phenomenal. It was very fun. Glad you enjoyed. It. Here's my card, and oh. he'll flip out of his sleeve his card and just. Thank you. I don't know what to do with this. Well, the way it works is now that you've seen me. If you have a ma magical friend, you could use the message spell to get me to do appointments. Like fixing the windows? No, like you hire me to play music. Oh, but the party's tonight. Yeah, but you might have more, right? Yeah, the Harvest Festival happens every year. So next year comes around, you want a musician who plays some funky stuff, you give me a buzz. Or you have someone who knows message give me a buzz. Yeah, so we'll call the band like we always do, and you'll be with them. You just said you were with them, right? No, 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 I, I'm a wandering minstrel. I showed up today, they were playing, and I decided to play with them. Isn't minstrel a pasta? No, that's minestrone, my dear. <laughs> I thought that's that thing that babies had. No, but are you single, my dear? You're too pretty to not to be. My husband just walked away. He peed himself. Oh, my. <laughs> That's a damn shame. Well, if he, until he returns, would you mind if I am your escort? But I'm not a prostitute. That's not what I'm... You have a lovely evening, ma'am. It's been great. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Can't always get with you. <laughs> My dis my notes, by the way, description notes are just in bold, slightly airheaded noble. <laughs> so no, no, it was appropriate. But <laughs> I couldn't. I have to work with something. And, uh, <laughs> when there's nothing there, there's like so much you can do. <laughs> you can't magically fix stupid either. Take care, my guys. Actually, you can. I just don't know that one. Life. God damn it! I don't know that spell. Oh no. <laughs> Can you oh, awaken an idiot? I don't have, this is something that must be found out and tried. Oh, God. Um, all right, so... Put we'll it on the bucket to, list. Uh, Chengis. Uh, Chengis, I'm sorry. Unless you want to hold again until after. Uh, no, no, no. I, no. I, would move, I would move back to the group at this point, but I will hold any further comment until afterwards. Yeah, this one. I remember Chengis' next action. I don't know if you wanted to go next or not. Oof. So, I'm going to walk up mm -hmm. to uh, Lord Augustus. And I'm gonna say, Lord, Lord Augustus, you're 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 the man that we wanna we wanna talk to. You're you're the man that we wanna wanna deal with. And in, in I'm gonna regard. dispel the card. Okay. I I don't know how to dispel the card because it doesn't really say yeah, how I'll, to. So I would say that um, your best put is like you kind of walk close and just cover it with your foot, and then the image just stops, and you can kind of pick it up later. I'd assume. Okay. Yeah. Does so it say the I'll, card gets, that. gets like wasted or used when you? Yeah, uh... it's used. You can't use that one anymore. Okay. So yeah, I mean, um, hmm. So so I'll say that. But it doesn't. In, it doesn't in... say anything about it disappearing or burning away or anything like that, right? Card itself? No. Okay. Yeah. So it just. It says the illusion lasts until the card is moved or the illusion is dispelled. Oh, so there you go. So um. I guess maybe it would have dispelled the illusion of him jumping through it, but regardless, we're going to play it how it was. We'll say that once you kind of put your foot over the card, you just, you, you kind of, I, I guess unless you're trying to make it obvious, you slyly kind of just shift it, and then as soon as the card moves, um, the, the image dispels. dissipates. Yeah. 
Yeah. And he looks at and you then... kind of quizzically because, of course, you walk close and then it goes away, but he's just not sure what you did, so. Um. And, and, <clears throat> and I'm, you know, obviously four foot five. I want to, I want to make sure everybody knows this. This is a dwarf, right? This is a dwarf guy? Yes, sir. So he's also short? Yes. Um, I'm going to say, uh, you're, 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 you're very, you're, you're very, you're very, um, 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 yeah, yeah. So <laughs> you did a good job there. Uh, we want to work with you. Okay. Uh, work with me. How? And yeah, who is we? We, we want to get rid of your problem. Uh, you, you already, you already talked to, uh, the, the guy in the tux. The, yeah. You, you talked to, to the guy in the tux. Thing. Yes, I did. And he yeah, yeah, yeah. claimed he would help. Yeah, yeah. He gave me some good we're, info. We're, we're, we, we came, we came to this ball together, the the, the harvest ball. And, oh, okay, uh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, we're 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 here with with another another guy. See, see the see the guy in the red red. He's uh, yeah, he's weird. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He he told me to wear this mask. I I don't, I don't know why I'm telling you that, but um, so we're we're, we're gonna we're gonna help. Uh, uh, do you, can you just just point us in the right direction? Uh, last 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 leads. Uh, la last last place that was m mutilated. The last th person, sadly, was brought to the coroner's recently. Um, so I believe, and he kind of taps his chin. He's like, "Yeah, I don't, I don't think the report has made it to my desk as of today." Um, Crocus would be able to tell you more. And he points over to the the guy next to the lady in red. I next. Oh, okay. Oh, jeez. Of course. Um, yeah. Uh, so, so, uh, we, we, we don't need to be here anymore, right? Right. You can, you can just tell everybody that, uh, we're, 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 we're here to save the town and we're here to, you hired experts to, to, to do it. Right. Right. Um, I mean, if you solve our problem, then sure, we'll be happy. I'm not going to get people's hopes up. But what? Ho hopes up? Ho hopes up. Of course, of course. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, what, what are you going to tell the people then, then when, so that we can leave and, and we can, we can... I mean, if you wish to report. leave the party, you can leave the party. Well, we're, we're, we got to get the report, right? And when, you, when, you can when, just when go ask, you? you can go ask Crocus, tell him, to just point to me, tell him I told you to ask and it shouldn't be a problem. We're pretty close knit here, especially he and I uh, recently. Him being the doctor of the town and kind of doing the uh, the coroner work for me. Oh, oh okay. Cro crocus, cro 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 kiss. Got it. Crocus Desmond Dante, if you must know, but yes. That's funny because my name is Chenkis. So uh, yeah, let's um. I, I don't know if you want to end me there and then start with That's other fine. people. Yep. Is there more you want to ask him or? Uh, no, I, yeah. Okay, if there's not more you want to ask him, then yeah, we'll we'll let you go do someone else next turn. Uh, in this case, it is back to, Nukanuk, Nukanuk, Nuk. I can't figure it out. We'll figure it out eventually. It's back to Slaja. Nukanuk. Oh, good old yeah, nope, Nuka, nope. Nuke, but it's not Nuka, and and you Nukonk Nukonk I guess Nukonk yeah Nukonk yeah Nukonk Nukonk Slavja man it's a fun one how about how about Blake can you tell us what your character's name is <laughs> well so no one's asked me uh, oh, that's fair so yeah, for I all we know he's yet, I've yeah, been... he's got a fish situation going on for all we know it's, it's pronounced <laughs> the second Dave. you is silent. You know, something. Yeah. Uh, it's pronounced... <laughs> uh, yeah, you have to choke on a dick every time that you say it. I brought some for everybody. <laughs> nice! I'm fluent, I'm fluent in that language. <laughs> just just opens his robes and he's like, down here I'm more than half Goliath. <laughs> I got three dicks. There's enough for everybody. <laughs> what, that, what you don't know wow. is I know a large reduce. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Oh uh, god. Yeah, I've been waiting for someone to ask so that way I could just tell him to call me Nuke so it's easier. Uh, but fine. no one has. 
Uh, well, I guess after... Uh, oh, is that my turn? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so after hearing their conversation about the doctor and mm -hmm. old um, Chinkas uh, did not go ask this guy about horses, I would like to come up here to try and cut this running guy off. Yeah, okay. So he's definitely kind of like hurrying down the stairs. He's still got his cloak got pulled around his body. And he looks at you getting in his way and he's... I'm sorry, sir, but uh, I kind of require being somewhere else at the moment. Can I help you after? Uh, it should be quick. It will be quick as well. Uh, okay. Mod told me to talk to you. Okay. About what? Well, to keep it short, as you seem to be in the need of some urgent matter... Uh, we need a few things to be able to go off and try and stop whatever is happening to your town. Just a few few items would be great. I was told uh, you might um, be okay. able to... I am going to say this. I will accept whatever maybe that you're looking for, but come to me in the morning. I need to solve this problem now and make sure that this party goes off without a hitch. I'll probably leave in the night tonight. It's only a few... Uh, consumables. Why would you maybe? be leaving in the night when the problems are happening in town? Mm, well, it's better to see what happens during the day from the night from across the hills than to be a part of what happens during the night in the day from behind the walls. I understood about three of the words that you said there. Um, I'm going to leave now. Like I said, come talk to me in the morning. We it will be fine to do so at that time. And he's just gonna Where do I around. find you, sir? This is my home. This is my place. Just come back here. The servants will lead you in. Uh, and he goes to go out some devil doors over this way. In the night of the day. <laughs> <laughs> in the town. Dude, if you had to roll a persuasion check, I was going to throw a party inspiration on you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, was, was, I was ready. No, no was persuasion ready. was about to like clarify for that man what was just said. I so. was trying to confuse him to just. Oh, be you like, did. You whatever, most certainly confused the fuck want, out of him. Whatever you want, just take it. Here's yeah. keys to the store. To be fair, that is kind of what he said to you. He was like, "I'll accept oh. it, maybe whatever in the morning." So, yeah. but yeah, no, that was that was good. That definitely. <laughs> let me say this: you achieved your goal of confusing him. That's for sure. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Net twenty. <laughs> that's the, the, the only other thing I oh. want to do is yeah. just come down here and just uh, be like. <laughs> that went well. Like, <laughs> I guess we have to stay till morning. Uh, if we want any horses, or I don't know what you need, but perhaps I... some daggers or arrows would be nice as well before we oh. embark on this. So far, I'm over two. That one's an idiot, and that one's taken. Well, it sounds like uh, maybe staying till the morning would be better for what you're trying to accomplish here as well. Right, well, we're here to have a good time at this party. I don't know what else we're supposed to be doing here. Well, this is a bit above my pay grade here. But Why, I'm is something happening? Did you see that monster? That thing was huge! Have you heard anything of what our plans might be for, for this place? No. I'm just gonna look up. Because I'm already, what, two feet taller than this guy. I'm just going to look up to the ceiling and just kind of sigh. Just, uh, what, is this uh, up by the ceiling? So, there's creatures or something. So most likely the undead are coming and killing off the animals and the people. And I kind of look around and I, I bend over a little bit, draining their blood, evidently. So, yeah, so vampires are succubi. One of the no succubi go the other way. I've I've seen both, and I've not experienced whatever you were referring to. But well, she called herself a succubi. I don't know if she actually was one. That might just been her gimmick. Do you? <laughs> that's, have that's when the guy even... who would have been your kiff just screams in from one of the windows in the room. So she said, "I'll suck you, and I'm by. It's different." <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Kip. <laughs> that that happened. Uh, have you had any combat experience whatsoever in your travels? I've had plenty of combat and plenty of experience. Uh to just to to clarify this, outside of 
a bedroom or in a carriage or against a, a, a tree or shed or whatever it is. Yes, a bit of you. Okay, okay. Uh, it seems like the only other thing we need to do is find out from the doctor, which well, why don't you let myself and uh, Chinkus deal with that. Uh, what do you need to know? I'm good at talking to people most of the time. Well, it seems like uh, it's the people over there with the the blood red dress and oh, those uh, that one. What do you need from them? I can go back. I just want to find out what happened with the bodies. He allegedly is the doctor here. Eh, uh, Eric, right. give me a minute. I'll be back. See what I can tell you. Very well. And I'm gonna walk back to him and greetings yeah. again, sir. So before as you, you start, approach, no, I'm here to talk to you, not your wife. As you approach, saying that out loud, uh, she, you just watch as she like, audib like visibly like recoils seeing you, and she pulls her handkerchief out again, and she's, oh god, and he's just. <sighs> so you have crawled back out of your hole. I'm out of my knees. Anyway, before we go into anything further. My man over there has been talking to a uh, town guard. We're on a job uh, looking about bodies apparently being drained of blood. Any information you can provide us would get me out of your hair sooner. Yeah. Well, at least it's easy this time. I left yes, this first time. I have been assisting with research of the bodies. You are correct in that they have been drained of blood, but considering all of the cuts and bites, it is not entirely impossible for it to have just run out before we found it. Most of the scenes, well, there is definitely plenty of blood there anyway. Regardless, tell me, more. tell me more. The corpses are always, as I said, covered in slash marks and bites. Specifically bites around the chest and neck area. Hmm. If you need a timetable, the first body was found... And he looks at his, uh, the woman next to him and just... A month? Two months? What was it? And uh, she simply like counts on her fingers and... About seven, ten days. So yes, two months. Interesting. Um, can I roll a? I want to see either a medicine check or. All right. Here, here's my reasoning for this, and uh, you can give me the correct roll. Yeah. Goaty knows kinky role play. Okay. And deciding from. You know, just hearing the the conversation about where the wounds were and all that stuff is like, that deep where the punches and where were the bites exactly? Oh, I see. I see. What you did. Okay. Um, were the incisor marks? Were yeah, they, uh, that's a great question. marks or were they? Uh... I mean, he can answer that in general. Um, he would say yes. It looked like some sort of an incisor canine. It was sharp uh, teeth generally. Um. Most of the deep punctures showed, you know, rows of teeth, but some of the lighter ones were just two punctures from what looked like canines. He's okay. He's gonna press the digitate an apple, take a bite of it, and like so. But that bite radius. Um, he would tell you generally a smaller radius, but similar in terms of look. Yes, but usually, uh, the depth of the bites even where the the normal looking teeth or like where the the, the row of teeth would be i should say were much deeper than it would look like a you know in terms of if it was like a normal mouth like a human mouth or something yeah so narrower than a person's but deeper so it was sort of like a snout interesting interesting uh, so slash... not like that i more meant like it looked like they had an easier time penetrating the flesh and bone than um your teeth would have than on that apple or or whatever. He basically tells you your bite's not as deep as what these bites would have looked like on that apple. That's maybe the better way to phrase it. Hey, hey, comprende, sir. Now, 
these slash marks. Striations, but they... Claw striations are more, like, more akin to a blade. So as you ask that, um, you would actually notice that this gentleman kind of walks up and he just kind of taps Crocus on the shoulder. Uh, um, I saw Crocus. Could you tell me, has someone told you why the store is currently locked? No. You are the one who lives here. Why would I know why your doors are locked? Somebody smells that big. I, uh, uh, I'll check the other one. And he just, like, turns and runs back this way, and then he slowly kind of starts avoiding people as he's trying to walk towards the other side of the room. Um, but yeah. Um, but yeah, sorry, what was your last specific question, just so that I can go back to that? Yeah, with the, with the slices and punctures, were they akin to, uh, claw striations? Like somebody put, I don't know, spikes on their fingers and ran them through something? Or were they kind of like a stiletto blade type bag? No, it was multiple marks, like claws. I wouldn't say that they necessarily look like something fingers could create. It's not the same as nail scratches. Or at least not like yours or mine. I see, I see. So it is potentially something supernatural. I think it is just some sort of a strange beast of some sort. Probably new to these lands, was scared out of its home by something stronger, and it's just finding whatever it can to eat. Some sort of a bloodsucker. That's what it seems to me. Sir, are you suggesting this is the work of... I'm gonna cast Tasha's hideous laughter with this. My ex-wife? <laughs> <sighs> I get the joke, sir. But honestly... I'm not really in the mood. I'm on, saying I, I believe it. I gotta it. roll the spell. Hang on. Yeah, no, no, you're good. I'm saying I believe it to be more a monstrosity or a beast. Sorry, a beast, I should say, than a monstrosity. That he has to a beast more than a monstrosity. I already made the the joke, so the spell's coming out no matter what. Yeah, that's fine. Uh. And what's the, uh... Alright, so it might not be... Okay, so a creature of your choice that you can see within range perceives everything as hilariously funny and falls into a fit of laughter if the spell affects it. Target must make a wisdom saving throw or fall prone, becoming incapacitated and un unable to stand up for its duration. A uh, creature with an intelligence score of four or less is too dumb to understand. Yeah, he passed. He actually just met, so... Okay, so he wouldn't even notice the spell has gone off, so... Yeah, and like I said, he still just kind of looks, it says to you, you know, as funny as that is, it's not really impressive. And, uh, yeah, it gives you that answer. Yeah, at least you're a good sport about it. Well, I'm off to tell my compadres about what we've discussed, and we'll see if we can't get to the bottom of this. Also, yes, uh, well, well, I doubt you will even be needed. This sort of problem always works itself out. Something along will Something will come along and kill the beast, or it will wander into some better prey. If you would pardon one more interrogative question, what's the deal with the guy who gets locked out of his own house? I don't know. Uh, Gislaine has always been... Well, he tries. He means well. But... You don't like him, clearly? No, no, honestly, I like him more than Duncan. He's just an idiot, but... Ghislaine, he's well-meaning, but a fool. Yeah, right. Yeah, thank you for answering questions, and I will leave since I clearly am a disturbance. Yes, well... At least you were polite this time. That was the first time! <laughs> Once you leave, the wife, like, removes the cloth from her face again. Uh, but we were going to go back to Jenkins now. Yes. Um. Yeah. So I guess I'll come up to uh, Zachariah. Okay. Um. Let's kick it, Bagman. Yeah. So so you talk you 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 talk to the 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 kiss guy the kiss guy yeah. Yeah. I talk to the the doctor over there. It says all the bodies of. Bitten and stabbed by something. 
Well, maybe not stabbed. They've been clawed. They've, he thinks it's a wandering beast. It's something that's uh, predatory in that nature. First it's body showed up a couple of ten days ago, so he said it's about two months, maybe. No, no. I mean, we we some, the the dwarf dwarf said un undead. No, our that was Nuck Nuck said un undead. Your name is Nuck. Blake, looking up to the big guy. Blake, yeah. <laughs> that was your moment. Oh, my bad. I was muted. I was over here talking. Oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, my my name is Nachonk Saja, but it's going to be easier if you just call All me. Right, I'm going to call you Sal. All right, Sal. <laughs> no. <laughs> It'll be best to refer to me as Nuke. Nuke. I like you, to cut of your jib. We'll take that nickname over mine, even though I think Sal is more appropriate. But yes, I was the one do, who. Do, 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 do I get a nickname? Nickname? Yeah, nickname? Bagman. You're good. Shortstop. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, go, Nuke. Nuke. You go ahead. You said I. It. I do believe from what I've been told and seen in this world of creatures is that it's quite possible they are not of the living. Yeah, I don't, don't know if don't. I know any songs of that variety. I could probably look up a couple of monster mashes or something. So, so beast? Beast that's un undead? Beast that's that's not alive? Or, or, or undead person yeah maybe something from the great rabbit zombies what did the doctor say about the bodies oh bitten stabbed puncture wounds mostly around the torso and the neck big bites or small yeah smaller than a human's bite range but deeper specifically so smaller either. than yours Zachariah. Uh, well i guess specifically smaller than mine so we're talking small creatures or humanoids about your size. Soul press to digitate the apple with the description of the bite radius and depth, like something like this. Yep, perfect. So again, uh, if you want to do um, either a nature, a history, or an investigation roll with advantage, I'll let you have the choice. For Zachary. Yep. For, for, um, for Nuke. Nuke. Nice. You said history, nature, or investigation? Your choice, with advantage. Because this is about a creature, so. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> Just rough tonight. That's okay. Um, yeah, you think that your issue is less about the knowledge and more about, like, the apple that Zacharias conjured up. Um, you can tell that he's done his best imagining, you know, what was described, but you don't think that it's actually very accurate. So, you're, like, looking at it like, this is, like, nothing I've ever seen, but it's more because you just you're like I know what bite marks look like. I just don't think this guy does. Uh, well, sorry, I have plenty of bite marks. I just don't know animals. Yeah, that's fair. It's hard to say for sure. Uh, perhaps a better look at the bodies would tell us more. But no can do. According to the apparently absent-minded landowner, the doors are locked. And at this point, all of you give me a uh, perception check, quick. Straight perception? Yeah. Uh, where did the little thing go I had up before? Fuck. I gotta go take a piss real quick. So both Nuke and Chenkis would definitely notice this, but uh, Zachariah would not. Uh, the man that he's talking about uh, is actually pushing against another set of double doors on the west side of the room now. And then he kind of backs up and holding, holding his arms out in a very exasperated look. And uh, those doors seemed to not open for him. Oh snap! Da da da, da, da Zach, Zach, Zachariah, you 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 see you you see the the yeah, sword the... man. So if, uh, yeah, if it's I saw him out, earlier. Yeah, if it's pointed out to you as well, Zachariah, you would you would look over and be able to see it. It's just you didn't door... notice it yourself. Yeah, that's him. It looks like he's pounding on another door in vain and contemplating the meaning of life and what he did to his um, pants. Um. Um. You you said it was his his house how how house and and 
the the first door was locked, and now we're at the second door. Second door is locked. Yeah, but I guess so. I didn't and, really and put too much stuck came, into it. And the door we came through was 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 locked b behind us. Are are we locked in here? Well, let me take a look. See, see how many doorways we got in here. There's that one over there. That one over there. That one over there. Yeah, we're probably locked in here. One hell of a sex orgy if the, if they throw that one down that way. I haven't been in with this many people before. I like that Zacharias, but in, to enough orgies though that he has to actually like declare specifically what kind. Like, Man, last time I heard orgy, I thought it was going to be a, one of these sex orgies like this, but no. It was an orange orgy. All we did was drink orange juice. Fresh squeeze was delicious. But weirdest orgy I've been to. They called it the bachelor brunch. Everyone had to cover their drinks with a napkin. I didn't get it. <laughs> exactly. It's just, he's been to enough of them. That it's, it's a specific distinction for him to go to a sex orgy. I like it. Character treat. I know what I said, and I said it with pride. Sex, sex, sex orgy? Or, what, what, what's, what's a sex orgy? He'll get onto a knee and put a hand on Bagman's shoulder. How old are you? What? what? It's in, an important in... question. I need the context for this. <laughs> uh, I wrote it in my character sheet. Hold on. Let me see. The next... 34? 34? The next 34. question yep. needs to be, how old does your race get? Because I think it's probably important for him to contextualize that he's not dating like an eleven year old in that man's race. <laughs> right? I didn't think about that one. All right, talking to my inner demons. How long does your race generally survive for? Oh, that's a great question. Let me <laughs> do some quick research. All right, well, you quick maths. Uh, up to two hundred years. Nice. You're basically a child. Goddamn. I'll tell you when you're older. It's still alive. It says that I reach adulthood at age 24. Oh, so you're I live up then. to 200 years. Yeah. There you Saying go. this, none have yet reached old age, so the top age is just the speculation. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Well, with that future context, um, well, basically, it's when a bunch of people to get together and have a massive, massive mating ritual of epic proportions, where everyone is drunk, naked, and screwing each other. Burn, burning each other. Okay, do we have a hot dog and a donut that I can explain this with? <laughs> no, but you do have press digitation if you want to take one. I do yes. have press digitation. <laughs> so, he he goes to start doing this and realizes, you know what? I gotta wait till the lights go down before we do this. I'll tell you later. <laughs> okay. Fantastic. Is that is that just like the plan? Five five minutes later. <laughs> you, you catch on quick, Bagman. You catch on quick. Okay, so the the doors the doors are are locked. Wait. Yeah, right. Forget about that. Well, I, I could try something. And, yeah. So uh... Blake, if you missed it, uh, soiled guy went to try the door on this side, and it's locked as well. So I pointed that out to Zachariah. I'm gonna use the knock spell. Perfect. Okay. So, just remind me, knock opens any door or lock chest. Regardless of okay. condition, or so, uh, choose an object that you can see within range. The object can be a door, box, chest, set of manacles, padlock, yeah, yeah, or any yeah. other object. Blah blah. A target that is held shut by a mundane lock or that is stuck or barred becomes unlocked, unstuck, or unbarred. If this object has multiple locks, only one of them is unlocked. If you choose a target that is held shut with the arcane lock spell. That is suppressed for 10 minutes, during which time the door can be open and shut normally. When you cast the spell, a loud knock audible from as far away as 300 feet emerges from the target object. Okay, so you would use knock, and you would definitely, um, I guess, I, I don't know if you hear it or feel it, but you'd register that what feels like a deadbolt uh, gets undone. Um... And I guess it, that everyone in the room would hear the loud knocking noise, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So they just hear, like, shave and a haircut, because it's that style of knock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, I guess mo pretty much everyone would turn and look at you both um, over there, and uh, at that point, Ghislaine would kind of be looking over his shoulder and then look back at you. You asshole, what did you do? Why did you make everyone look at me? 
Well, it, your door is stuck. I used a spell to try to unlock the door for you. Its side effect is it's obnoxiously loud. He goes to obnoxiously. He, he kind of like quickly glances back at the door and pushes on it, uh, and it wiggles a little. But you can tell there is still something restraining it on the other side. Yeah, God, man, how do you? How much security do you believe in? How many locks are on this door? There's supposed to only just be a deadbolt. I don't know. Yeah, well, I, I tried. I can't do anything more than that. I got the deadbolt, apparently, but if there's more than one lock, yeah, you're out of luck. I just, I, I mean, it feels like it's, there's something holding the handles from the other side? And you well, can see I he's, like, try... shaking it very ferociously, but it's not coming undone at all. Yeah, well, I've done what I can for you. Um, he'll, he'll lean in. I might also be able to help with your problem. Which? Well, I can spell it. And he blinks a couple times. But I thought hemorrhoids weren't smelly. Your <laughs> pants, man, your pants. Oh, oh, yes, absolutely. Will you give me yours? No, and he'll snap his fingers and press to digitate them. They're clean. <laughs> oh, oh, thank God. Oh, thank. Oh, that's the only reason I needed to leave anyway. Ah, eh, fuck it, the doors will unlock whenever they unlock. And he just kind of, like, wanders off now and goes back to return to his wife. You are... Oddly nonchalant about all this. <laughs> yeah, good news. I figured out why he was trying to leave. He needed to be apparently pissed himself. Alright, so I've kind of lost track. I think it's technically Nuke's turn. Yeah, I was just filler, yeah. I guess. Yeah, no, I know. It was RP. I'm just trying to get back onto whoever's actually got actions. Uh, uh, what, what happened with the doors... Uh, for whatever means we can't tell, I got one of the locks to magically undo itself, but the door is apparently quote unquote held shut from the other side. Both sides are like that, or just that one? I only tried the one, but you're more than welcome to try to break down a different door. Very well. And I just want to come to this door. Mm hmm. Um, and then I am going to think, I think, uh, 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 <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk fucking through it. I'm gonna oh, ether walk. Oh, you're gonna try and go through the ethereal plane? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So, um, you activate the skill and you step into the ethereal plane, uh, and it will allow you to pass through, I think, people and objects both. Is that the case, yep. or is it just people? creatures, creatures and objects, as if okay. they were difficult terrain? Yeah. Uh, okay. So what you do is, um, you basically start to walk through the door, and as you do so, you actually see on the other side an assortment of people. Um, there's about five of them, and one of them is standing, looking the other direction. You know, looking out as if like guarding, and the other four are actually holding uh, boards um, through the handles of the door. Uh, all of them have kind of a misty look in their eye. They also are dressed as if they were uh, likely serving staff. Uh oh. You said they have a misty look in their eye. Yes, sir. Uh... If you want to do an arcana check, <coughs> let me check something quick. Arcana check. Yeah, give me an arcana check with advantage. I think that falls under the purview of that. 19. Yeah, 19 is beautiful. Okay, so with that, you can most certainly tell that the misty look in their eye is most likely some sort of a charm effect. Uh, and with that, give me another history with advantage. 15. So the charm effect is enough to kind of kickstart your mind. It's kind of helping slot the clues into place, and you realize that you are most likely dealing with something of a vampiric origin. But I can't. I can only see the people, like the wait staff. I can't see. Somebody, There's nothing like... else around. Yeah, as far as you can tell, that they're the only ones there. Um, they all have that kind of charmed look to them. Okay. Um, and you said they're holding that board there. Yes, there is actually two separate groups of two people each, holding two separate boards through the, uh, through the handles. And I will also tell you that you can kind of see that the deadbolt is also thrown across the the door. 
So um, it's pretty easy for you to infer that with what with what Zachariah was telling you, it's likely that the same thing is happening on the other side, and he undid the deadbolt, but the, the people holding the board through the, the handles were likely still stopping him. Okay. I'm going to let you think about that for a second. Um, we're, we'll go to uh, back to the top of the order, which is actually Zachariah at this point. Is there anything you want to yeah. do while he kind of mulls that over? I mean, I've... Short of mingling with more people, I don't think there's much else I can do. Okay, that's totally fine. Um, if you want to mingle, feel free. If not, we can just wait and see what happens. Um, I'll uh, look down to Changus and just... So what's your take on this whole ordeal? Um, um, well, it's, it's, it's not sex orgy yet. Um, no, it's not. Mm -hmm. I think the you monsters are in here. I think the monsters in here. I mean, we'd find out eventually, but usually the lights would go dim. Some creepy organ music would play. That's how it always shows up if it's a vampire. Vampire. Vamp. 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 Who? Who said it was vampire? I'm just making jokes, sir. Besides, I don't know. Usually, one of these parties, if it's a murder mystery dinner type thing, it, the lights would go out, someone would fall over dead, and there'd be a piercing scream in the night, and... Oh no, it's the people we don't recognize. They're always the ones who did it. Get the pod. Um... I was, I was really waiting for the DM to... to Let you know. <laughs> get the lights and... Yeah. No, it's um, not going to happen uh, quite on your queue. Sorry. I wasn't trying uh, to do it on my queue. I just thought it would be funny as fuck. Um... <clears throat> Well, well, I mean, I, hmm, who, we, we like the dwarf. I, I like the dwarf. I, he's, he seems, I don't think he's it. I don't, I'm, yeah, he seems the brave sort, dude. Dove head first into whatever that monster that just showed up was. That was a neat party trick. I got to learn that from whoever did that. And then, and then the, this guy up, up here, and I'm pointing at the, the, nobleman wearing the pants uh, yes. that yeah. we didn't get his name so you would you would um, already notice as you point to him that again he's like browsing the crowds talking to the pretty women yep um I was, he he he's he's too scared he he's not i don't, i don't think he's the vampire he's he's too scared scared i wonder if he would cause a commotion a lot, of, a lot of strong women, very, very strong women. All, all. I know. All. I saw that kick earlier. It was delicious. Well, well, yeah, right. But even noticing the one talking to to you in in the red. Yeah, Sass. she's quite distasteful of me. I don't know Sass. what I did to offend her. Strong. And and thing? the and and the woman in white, she. Helping people, very, very. She can't be the vampire, but I, I, I don't, I don't know about the rest. The rest. Well, the the one up on the balcony is kind of. Uh, what's the polite word for this? Slow. <laughs> what a polite word. everything very literally. Slow as in, as in just, just, like a turtle. No, I'm pretty sure a turtle can put more rational thought into things. Hmm. She didn't understand what a business cut was. How could you be a noble and not know that? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but the good old business card trick, yep. It wasn't a trick. I've got a hundred oh. of those things. Oh, yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that Did I say trick, trick, trick? No, no, no. no. Yeah, yeah. The business card thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, can at I, this point, I let guess, me just go ahead. If there's something you want to do, are you still good? Only thing I could do is, I guess, scan the crowd and see if I could locate someone who's acting weird and fidgety besides us. So I'll tell you, you guys are already on the right path instead of that, um, and it's it's not going to be a non-portraited character. Your deductions okay. so far have been good, and I would, you know, it's not going to be someone in the crowd per se. It's yeah. not one of the nameless faces. It's right. going to be one of. There's the a reason ones. there are portraited characters. 
Okay. okay. Yeah, no worries. So um, I would say at this time, let's check in, check in with Nuke. Is there anything that you want to do, Nuke, now that you've had a chance to kind of think on it? How many people you said are on the other side? Four? Five. Four of them holding Five. the boards, and a fifth is like looking guard. I guess I guess I'll just come out of that and uh, come back over and just yeah. tell tell them what I saw. Yeah, perfect. So as you kind of come back to the side of the door, uh, you actually realize that the time frame that you were able to be in the uh, other realm is kind of quickly nearing its end. And as you step back, um, you kind of step back into the corporeal realm, and you just turn around and reapproach the group. Yeah. So it, it, the reason I'm saying that is it only lasts for two turns. So you do the turn to go through the door, and then you kind of made a turn to come back through the door. So it's going to turn off now. It seems uh, something as uh, several somethings are stopping the doors from being able to be opened on the other side. It's about five on this one. I assume the same on the other. Interesting. Uh, um, s s someone's. You you said there's there's several someone's. It what, appears what? to be who, who whoever they, they had. Like? Well, is it the mullet? The, the 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 guards? It's it seems to be their their help, their wait staff, the servers and sort. <sighs> But they definitely were not themselves. They seemed to be under some sort of control or sway from someone else. Hmm. Hmm. So, 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 so I, th drugged. I think, I think, I think we're locked in here with with the with the with the the monster, the undead. You think they're here already? Yeah, yeah. I was telling, I was telling Zachariah. I, 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 I think they're in here. I, they're. I, I don't think it's the dwarf, or his wife. The d dwarf is too. Too, too. Uh, um, 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 um. Um, heroic, heroic, heroic. It's too. He's too heroic to be. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe he is too heroic. And it goes full circle. It could be anybody. Well, except for that guy. And I point at the guy with the pins again. <laughs> he's, he, he's a little girl. I like the Chen kiss is like building a board of red string in his head. <laughs> <laughs> but like the dwarf, like I, I had was like safe. And now like talking about it Now it's it got it like again, a red circle. Like, and it's got this little, like an uh, arrow. Yeah. <laughs> is it is it best disguise ever? <laughs> yeah. Is he is it just like too good to be bad or too bad? Yeah, too good to be bad. Yeah. Oh. You gotta be outside the city to see what's going on inside. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, all right. So in that case, um, all right. I'm just gonna put it forward this way, I guess, because I don't want us to go too too long tonight. Is there another round of anything that anyone wants to do in terms of questioning or actions, or do we want to just see if you guys can make a guess? And we'll see how that Did progresses. Anybody I have start? one last thing I could try. Go for it. And uh, also, Blake, feel free to ask your questions first. Well, I was just going to ask if any of us tried the door we came in on. No, there was an audible thunk that signified it shut behind us when we, when we showed up. Yeah, there was a reason I was specific about that. Uh, okay, all right. That's all I have. Alright, guys, I can only do one more thing. And, uh, hopefully it draws out our foe. If not, well, I made a good show of it. And, uh, Sakurai will make his way through the crowd and be like, You, sir, with the medals, uh, may I have a word with you in private for a moment? I'm, I, do, I don't really know you, but sh sure, I guess. Um,. Honey, wait here a minute. Okay, come on over this way, sir. And he's going to wave his hand, and he's going to kind of walk back towards, yeah. like, underneath the overhang of the uh, balcony here. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna use my ability called Words of Terror. Okay. 
Once per short, we- uh, per short rest, I can speak to a humanoid creature and cause it to become frightened of me or another creature of my choice if it fails a wisdom saving throw. Alrighty. And it will last for one hour until it or its allies are attacked or damaged. Okay. And uh, you just want to make him afraid of you? No. I just... So we have reason to believe that there may be a vampire in the group tonight amongst these people. And we think that it might be aiming for you. I need you to remain calm and try to orderly find a way out so that you may save yourself from this terror. Oh, I see. And you're going to use the skill after saying that sort of thing? Yes. Okay. So he's got to do he a wisdom saving throw. He needs to make a DC, wisdom DC 17. Now you rolled a 5 total. So uh, you <laughs> yeah. say that and you, you activate this skill and you just watch as the color drains from his face and the terror enters his eyes. And he stammers really loud, enough so that most of the room turns at once he once he starts speaking. But 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 vampire, why would it want me? Like just like sir, you, sir, you need to control yourself. I'm not delicious. I'm fatty. My blood is fatty. I promise. I don't eat me. There. You need to calm down. No! And not no! Panic I'm not even getting in my vampire! And of course, the whole let crowd him go is. And see is... where he runs. He doesn't seem to necessarily run anywhere at first. He just, like, backs slowly into the corner. Just his eyes are scanning the whole room. And when he when he bumps into the, the, the wall here, he looks up and he realizes the balcony is above him. And he starts to tremble like a leaf. And he just, like, books it off this way. And he puts his back to the wall and he just starts looking out the whole room. And uh, scanning basically everyone. Uh, like, any, it's any time that anyone starts to try to approach him, he just freaks out, starts shaking, and, like, moves away from them. And eventually his wife, of course, who's seen the whole thing, she kind of regains control of herself after the shock of what has just occurred, and she kind of saunters over trying to calm him. But even her, as she steps in, he's like, Stop! 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 I love you, but I can't! I don't know! who we, uh, Vampires can be women! Women can be vampires! I don't know! I, uh, I, I don't know! While this is going on, I want to look around and see who isn't paying attention to the spectacle. Yeah, so give me a perception roll. Um, while this is happening, yep. I'm going to telepathically okay. speak to this guy Uh-oh. And, God damn it. And, okay. and tell him... I am the vampire, right? So like it's it's, it's just in his it's, head. Yeah. It's in his head saying that I am the vampire. Yeah. So so are you well, I guess he hears this voice and he doesn't know where it's coming from and his eyes just get, you know, even more panicked as he starts glaring around in the room just every person locks eyes with he's you you're the vampire. No you. No you. He's like pointing at like, you know, young children. You're going to drink my blood. No you're going to drink my blood. Ah! Uh, he's just just horrified. Um, uh, Zachariah, you 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 try and look around, but you are just constantly your eyes are drawn back to this guy and and the humor of the moment that you have caused, and you're just like doubled over laughing and like no matter how no, much you try and look around, you're just I I yeah, love no, this too I, much. I, I, I I'm trying. There's a real threat, but God damn man, I I, just, I told you to calm <laughs> yeah. down. You love what you have caused. Regardless, uh, how about you, Nuke? Anything you want to try while this is happening? Um. So I was looking at my feet. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, it just after. Does. So I want to make the guy hear his own voice now, telling him that he's the vampire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I have Hunter's Bane. It okay. says uh, I have advantage on wisdom and. Checks to track Fae, fi- fiends, or undead. Yep. Uh, I don't know how that could help me or not. Right. Does that mean I, I can, like, look for it? or? It would mean that if you wanted to try and utilize, like... So it means that you can track them, right? So tracking would be anything that you, you know, any action you could determine would be something that you think would get you on the trail of whatever it is you're trying to hunt. So if you were hunting a deer, you know, looking for, for footprints would be a survival check would, would be tracking. In this term, I would I would say that, you know, tracking as a definition probably expands to doing things like trying to tell, you know, physical differences of the people in the room to see if anyone has something stand out that you might think is vampirish. Like, you know, you're going around and you, you go talk to everybody and you decide to look at their teeth and if they have sharp looking teeth, right? You know, stuff like that would, would probably count. 
Um, okay. So okay. if you were to go do, I think it actually it also counts uh, if you read lower. It says something about your wisdom or your int rolls um, for the same purpose, uh, which is why I have I've had you rolling with advantage on a lot of these things. Oh, uh, I um, see. I see. Right. So and and you have advantage on intelligence ability checks to recall information on them. So I think it falls more in that second half. But yeah, you'd be able to do like a um, an intelligence, you know, nature check or history check or something like that. Or actually, investigation probably makes the most sense in this regard um, of, on the people to try and determine any sort of physical characteristics. But that'd probably be the closest you can get. Okay. I. I want to talk to the doctor and the lady in red and just essentially do that. Like, go uh, okay. strike conversation. So, so you'll need to actually strike up a conversation to actually, you know, get their interest in you. And then once you do, I will let you roll that perception check, or sorry, investigation check with advantage. So you got to figure out what you want to say to them first just to get them engaged. That's the first step. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I'm just going to come down here. Um, All right, so as you're walking close, you definitely see that much like everyone else, they are paying a lot of attention to the uh, the man with the yellow dot, um, and they're, you know, both kind of in hushed tones talking about whatever's happening, um, but as they see you approach, they kind of, not necessarily stiffen up, but they quiet up for sure, and they, they uh, return to a more um, kind of noble air as they, you know, they, they stand up straight and look at you and, yes, what is it that you want? Ma'am? Uh, sir? Mm-hmm. My colleague, I believe, spoke to you about the bodies. Uh, he seemed to be unclear on if there was a way for us to look at them. Were they disposed of, or do you still have them? <sighs> the older ones have course, already buried. But yes, the most recent corpse is still within my clinic. If you wish to come by in the morning, I would be more than happy to allow you visitation of it. Uh, so go ahead and give me that perception with advantage, I believe. Or sorry, was it investigation? I keep mixing it up. Investigation with advantage, yeah. 21. Beautiful. Advantage working out for you, too. So with the 21, you are more than able to tell that as he's talking, um, you actually know especially with vampires, they're very good at hiding themselves. Uh, so you don't actually look necessarily directly at his, his canines. Uh, but you look at his gums as he's talking, and you notice that uh, the gums are, are very swollen right near his canines, as in uh, his fangs are most likely retracted or sheathed right now, but he definitely does not have the normal teeth structure of a human, uh, and it is very akin to what you have seen in vampires before. Perfect, perfect. Um, thank you. I uh, will definitely be... Making my rounds in the morning and would be grateful if I might have a chance to see these bodies for myself. Yes, whatever. If it helps for killing the beast, then I guess I can do my part. Well, as long as it doesn't just solve itself before we do. Right, exactly. I'm glad you've been listening. Um, I want to turn to the lady in red mm -hmm. and kind of, uh, just say, um, it's a beautiful gown, my lady. I'm sure it was quite expensive. Yes, it was very expensive as far as I'm aware, but being the wife of a doctor, I'm sure you know that we make more than enough coin. I assume he doesn't trouble you with his work in the office, being a doctor. It simply takes him away from me for longer than I'd like, but if that's ever an issue, I am more than able to visit him at his clinic. So no, it is not a problem. That's wonderful. If not for him I... saving my life, with those medical skills, I would not be here today anyway, so... It is really not my place to hold anything against them. If I may pry, how exactly did he save your life? I was dying of a disease, and he was the only one able to cure me. Apparently, others had tried, 
But it wasn't until Old Croak is here that, uh, well, it was the key. That's, that's wonderful. Can I, uh, can I check her as well? Yeah, go ahead and give me another investigation with advantage. 21. Same, 21, beautiful. So yeah, you would actually kind of notice the same thing. Um, however, in this instance, whereas Crocus was kind of very well hidden, looks almost human from an unexperienced eye, it was really only that you have experience that you noticed anything, her canines actually look relatively sharp. Uh, they're not very long, but they are far sharper than his, and definitely look sharp enough to very easily penetrate uh, the flesh of a man. Perfect. Do me, do me a history check with advantage as well with that, because it's actually more information on on dead that you kind of might remember. 16. Yeah, with a sixteen, you'd be able to kind of judge um, based on your past, his, you know, experience and knowledge. Um, wind fangs look like this on a vampire. You imagine it's because she's probably likely more of a fledgling, eh, fledgling vampire than him. Uh, you know, she's newer. She can't quite hide it as well. Okay. Uh, well, the only other thing is... Um, one more question, if I might be so bold. Go ahead. Uh, how long have you two been married? Then slightly after I saved her. I don't know. What? Half a year? And she just nods. What did I? A little more than that, yeah. Wonderful. Well, I thank you both. Yes, well, if you could do something about that buffoon, I'm not sure why he is screaming what he is, but... It seems someone needs to help him, and if you're so much an expert on these m sorts of matters, maybe you can calm him. Tell him there is no problem, especially not a vampire one. Absolutely. From what I understand, it all takes place outside the castle, I believe. Or the grounds. Outside the grounds. What, the killings? Yes, they all have. Right, so I'd assume whatever is doing it is definitely not here, and most oh, likely not, I would not agree. a vampire. I would agree. Which is why I'm asking if you can go and perhaps silence him before he gets everybody all worried more than they already are. Very well. <laughs> Just gonna watch walk past Chenkis. Like, it's them! It's them! <laughs> <laughs> oh well. So this is the this is the bad part. Oh, you're what? You said you're like four foot two or something like that. Yeah, like four and, or five. And I'm like seven and a half feet tall. So. <laughs> <laughs> like your head is at my hip. Yep, pretty much. Not even. <laughs> so, like, for me to say something secretive to you, like, I either have to pick you up, or, or pre and pretend <laughs> pretend to drop something. Yeah, so you're, like tie my sh like adjust my armor. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, actually, that's perfect. So I'm uh, I'm gonna stand over here and just kind of like um, twist and uh, uh, turn in my tux or whatever, and then kind of brush myself off and bend over and pull my my pant cuffs down to make sure that they're they're nice and turn to um chinkas here and just say at the minimum the doctor and his wife in red are both vampires but the, they're, the vampires va they're yeah. here they yeah. i was right evidently it's quite possible there's more but those two, uh, at least for sure, are absolutely vampires. How how do you tell? How do you tell? How do you tell? Uh, not to make this take longer than it needs to, but I've come across quite a few creatures in my time, and uh, there are absolute signs to know, and it appears the wife, uh, Lady in Red there, is definitely newer, been turned newer than than him, and so she is not quite as apt in hiding her ways. Okay. Uh, DM question. Would yep. I have any clue about vampires? Like, is this a world that I would... So, I would say that you actually know undead pretty well, you know, simply because your expertise is in soul-stealing, essentially, right? Yep. So you might not be an expert in undead in terms of, like, you hunt them, but 
you know, you've it's not like they're unfamiliar to you. Um, so, what is it, I guess, in particular that you're trying to glean or know? Uh, nothing in particular. I was just looking for general knowledge of what I might know for vampires. So you definitely um, know what vampires are. I would say that you right. you don't you wouldn't have like folklore type. Right, exactly. Um, and maybe even have you know met people in the past who claim to have fought vampires or have seen the effects of them. But um, okay. it's more like you know you know it um, colloquially through through word of mouth. Yeah. You haven't necessarily fought them before, right. but yeah, you're 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 informed. Yep. Nuke, nuke. Can, can you, can you, can you, ch can, can a dwarf be a vampire? Dwarf. I've seen many different creatures be vampires. Can, can you, can you see, see if he, he, him, him, down there in, in, in the red, the red the dwarf. Can you see if he's a vampire? If, he, if he's not, ha hail me over. I will see what I see. I guess I'll go uh, talk to Lord Augustus here. And and while he goes over there, I'm going to telepathically uh, talk to Zachariah and say, Z Z Zachariah, it's 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 Chenkis. Chenkis, uh, come come over to me slow, slowly, but not too slow, like no normal speed, but slow. Come over to me. <clears throat> Hey, I'm sorry, were you talking to me? Hey, God. Yeah. Hey, God. I'm coming through. Pot the crowd, God damn it. Coming through. Coming through. Coming through. Well, what's up? Uh, <clears throat> um, sorry, I was having too much fun laughing at that idiot over there. Yep. Nook thinks that uh, the, the, the people that don't like you are vampires. He, he says that they're vampires. Um, I, That's I why have it didn't him, work. I, I have him seeing if... if uh, if the dwarf dwarf's a vampire or not, if, he, if he's not a dwarf, you know, they love axes. I'm, I have an axe. I'm not going to give him an axe. Right, hey, makes perfect sense to me. Carry on. What, what, what? You, you, you have a plan? You, Let me make, see make how these plan? things play out. Once I do, I'm going to make my move. Uh, uh, I'm reactionary, bag man. I'm reactionary. That's how I operate. Okay. I guess I guess cut off to Blake over yep. to you. That is totally fine. So in that case, Blake, um, what is it you're trying to ask to get his attention so you can check his teeth? Uh, I don't know, it'd be like uh, uh, if I might talk to you for another moment, Lord Agnes. August, Augustus? Augustus, yeah. It was Augustus, Augustus yeah. yeah. Yes, what is it that you need? Um, and I... Your troops that you have here, um, do you, by chance, have a, a stable or a mounted team that you have? Are you asking if we have cavaliers, mounted soldiers? Yes. Uh, yes, we have a couple people who are trained in it, but it's not like it's a focus of our militia, no. I guess a more straightforward question would be to see if you have armor for horses. We have a few pairs, uh, old and tarnished, but still functional. Why, do you need them for something? It's quite possible when we leave in the morning that we would prefer to have a bit more protection. I see. Yes, our... yes, of course. That makes sense. Uh, and at this point, you can definitely do that investigation with advantage. Don't do me now. 14. So 14, um, you kind of have some trouble determining, but you would kind of bet with that it doesn't seem like he has any sort of fangs. But you can't quite tell. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, that would be greatly appreciated. And then I would turn to... Well, I guess I would say... Uh, and we weren't introduced earlier, but this this is your, your wife? She is my fiancée. 
Um, make sure I'm giving you the right name. Um, my dear, if you wish to introduce yourself. Uh, and she just kind of gives you a little curtsy. And I am Cordelia Taylor, uh, soon to be Cordelia Hebernon, but currently still with my maiden name. Yes. Wonderful. And how, if I might pry, did sh you two come about? I being... actually met her here in town. Um, she's a common woman, but I am also a common man, given lordship more through my military actions than through any sort of upbringing. So when we met and I fell for her, I refused any other, and she has gratefully accepted to be my wife. As a commoner myself, I understand completely how uh, nice it must be. And she, she just... Yes, I very much appreciate his love for me, as I never felt as royal as when in his presence. But most of this, and she kind of like waves her hand at the party, that's a bit beyond my depth. I'm still learning, still struggling, but... Augustus is forgiving, and things have gone relatively well. And at this point, um, she's definitely talked enough. You can do another investigation with advantage. Cool. So I'm yeah, with an 11 worse. being worse, uh, you know, you're kind of more captivated by the conversation, so it's you're, you're struggling to investigate uh, very well, and you can kind of, as far as you can tell, she just seems to have pretty normal teeth. Perfect. Uh, uh, well, thank you, ma'am. Uh, but if I might, I would like a moment to talk to your engaged here. Well, of course, I can distract as I did before, and she'll just kind of like step step out past you, um, and just kind of let you walk back, you know, past to talk to her fiance. Perfect. As I do that, I do want to look and motion for Chinkus to to come. Yeah. Okay. So Chinkus, you would you definitely see him uh, motioning you over. Um, and you see my body, and you I will tell you though, as you go to move <laughs> over, you also notice that there is a bunch of commotion uh, from the southeast, as a couple of people seem to start backing up and screaming. Uh, let's put them there. I uh, will clearly focus on whatever the hell that is. Yeah. Chinkus has a choice to make. <laughs> um... Are they just screaming? Uh... They're, they're screaming and they're backing away, and you can't really see what's on the other side of the crowd right now, especially with how short you are. Man, I am short. <laughs> <clears throat> Guess I'm going to move here to... See what's see happening. See what's going on. Smart man. So as you and kind of as, press... As I move, I'm going to tell, I'm gonna tell uh, enough gear that... Uh, you know, other, other, going to the other side of the room. Yeah, got you, brother. So as you move around um, the crowd, you would see what they are backing away from seems to be two new monstrosities. These monstrosities are dressed in what looks to be as upper class of uh, outfits as the people that were in the group were wearing. And there are bloody marks on both of their necks. Uh, one of them is now shambling with nearly no glint in its eye. Uh, the other is kind of bent over, grabbing its head and screaming as its flesh turns kind of blue. Like I'm thinking this just happened? Yes. And I see our two noblemen, noble people. You see the two of them uh, standing there, yes. Uh, if you them. want to give me a perception roll, I can tell you potentially more details. 19. Just love those tonight. Yeah, that's good. That's fine. So with a 19 perception, it is more than evident to you both of the two nobles have blood around their mouths. And awesome. grins on their faces as well. Awesome. I'm the new uh, shout out. Uh, what am I going to say? Yikes. <laughs> well, there is a guy in the corner currently screaming, The vampire's coming! The vampire's going to kill yeah. me! So you could use that. <laughs> um, the the vampire is here. The, the 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 vampire is here. Everyone to the north of the room, run. 
so yeah, you call that out, and uh, at this point, I'm going to say we will officially enter uh, a true combat. combat. Um, I'm going to go to the top of the turn order, but we will use your initiatives. You guys roll pretty good. I don't think anyone really complained about that, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, yep. So with that being the case, the first up is actually Zachariah Fish. He'll, uh, you know, have been dancing his way down the thing, just looking around. And all of a sudden, he's like, "Oh, I knew you were too good to be true." Yep. With having seen that, my dear, your dress does not match the drapes. <laughs> and I'm gonna vicious mockery. So go ahead and vicious mockery. But as you say that, the other one, the the man next to her, will look at you and go. Again, I'm not a fan of your comedy. The drapes in the room are red. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead, go ahead. Go uh, so ahead. Does she have to do a saving throw? Is that the? Uh... Yes, she does. Uh, Whiz. She needs to make a wisdom seventeen. Actually, I think I programmed that one. Hang on. Uh, did I get that one in the time? That's okay. She only the rolls damage isn't correct on the on the uh, on roll twenty, but the DC save is. Uh, okay, yeah, she rolls a ten anyway, so she's definitely gonna fail the save. Okay, um, so I'm to gonna know. roll the. Uh, it's three d four. I'm gonna actually roll that. Hang on. Mm -hmm. Yep. Actually, it, it just hit three d four because level eleven, right? Yeah. Yep. Very nice. Nine psychic damage. Beauty. Yeah, so she takes the psychic damage, recoils as she grabs her head, and glares over at you. And you whip my body, cause you think I'm sexy. I think you're gross! <laughs> uh, anything else that you're looking to do? Um, looking to see what I actually have as a bonus action. Yeah, go for it. Cause I honestly don't know. What, what do I have for bonus action? Ah, okay. I'm gonna give a bardic inspiration to uh, Bagman. Alrighty. So you have a bardic inspiration, Chunkus. A one d four for. It is saves. currently one d ten for any ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. Very nice. Cool. <coughs> That's on the sheet. I should be able to. Is that uh, different than regular else inspiration? On um, on you, Zachariah. I'm going to say I moved to get to where I am for this turn, so no, I can't do anything else. Alrighty. Still a good turn, honestly. Not a bad opener. Uh, with that, it is actually Crocus's turn. So he is going to uh, look over at you, Zachariah, and look up at you, Chinkus, and say, It matters not that we have been revealed early. Enough of the party has passed, and our livestock has been gathered. And he will just run back over into this group of people. And you see him grabbing at people, and eventually he grabs one up and he bites down on its neck. Uh, and he's going to suck away for this turn and try and create another uh, slave for him to fight off you guys. Okay, I have a, I have a question. Is this person dead? No, now that no. he is being sucked, yes. You will notice the body's life is very rapidly leaving it. Okay. So do I uh... get... Do, do I get to make a trinket? No, because that's only if you kill them. It says if I see someone die within oh, 30 does it? feet of me. Uh, yeah. Then yeah, I guess the soul would be capturable. But it's going to take something, doesn't it? Doesn't it take an action, or am I wrong? I, I, I haven't actually made trinkets. Uh, it says as a reaction when you see a creature... Okay, so it would take your reaction you to do, but then, then yes, technically you can. Okay, this, this is a really dumb question, but do both of these vampires have shadows? It's mm, a good question. I don't know if it says. It's me metagaming for later if I get to that point, but it's just, you know, a thought. Yeah, no, it's an interesting question. I'm looking it up right now. I'm seeing if it says anything about it. Uh, never cast shadows or reflections. Yep. Fuck, I can't use that. Okay. Hey, well, so much for that idea. All right, don't mind me. That, that was, that's it. Yeah, I'm kind of curious. What was the idea, though? Uh, I have an ability called the Mantle of Whispers, and as a reaction, when a humanoid dies within 30 feet of me, I can capture its shadow and use it uh, to disguise myself as that person for an hour with enough well, information so to pass myself person, off as the person. So to be fair, the person who's dying would have a shadow, because it's just a normal sure, civilian. Sure, but, but I was going to try to take over one of the two vampire forms Once they died, to yeah. confuse the other one. Yeah, well, that would not But if they don't have a shadow, I can't do that. Yes, that is correct, yeah. Um... 
So yeah, in that instance, he's going to do that. And that's going to be it for this turn, because that's about all he can do in, in terms of oh, uh, actions. I can use my reaction and create a trinket, so I'll have three trinkets Yes, now. you can. Okay. Yeah. You can take the soul so long as I get the shadow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, all right, so then You're next up conquer, quite literally. <laughs> is his wife, Ophelia. So she, having been hit by you, Zachariah, is going to go 5, 10, 15, 20 towards you. Uh, as she does so, she kind of reaches... Wait for the dogs to freak out and go outside. She reaches uh, you know, into the layers of her dress, and she draws forth uh, a pretty vicious-looking dagger. And she's going to try and strike at you with it. Um, a 20... Uh, hey, let's put it this way. It's almost impossible for them to miss. Yeah, that's fine. It's just... I, it, I'm more... She hit a crit. <laughs> that was the more the thing. Yeah. Um, so it's a dagger, so it's going to be these. Uh, ooh, low rolls, though. So... Uh, seven damage with her dagger, and then she's also going to reach out a hand. Uh, oh, Jesus Christ, she actually double crit. Um, uh -huh. oh, All right, well, this this being a fun uh, well, match. It probably probably not because her damage is not very high. Um, so let's see. Or thirteen. Uh, yeah, so she hits Wait, a crit. Wait, she rolled a 13? Yeah, two crits. The second one was a crit as well. So it was oh, a, I thought you so were saying she rolled 13 a 13 total for attack. Yeah, yeah, she okay. hit you for, for 13 more damage, and, um... So a total of 20 so far. Yes, and that's all the total damage she will do this turn, but she's also trying to grapple you, so I need you to do, a uh, grapple escape. So, because I'm the escapee, I can use acrobatics? Correct. 28. Perfect. No oh! Problem. Yeah, so you, you kind of are still doing your little dance wiggle, and she can not uh, lock down on He's you. He's pelvic thrusting in her direction, and she yeah, stops. She, she's trying, she's <laughs> she trying to, like, reach out wanna... over the pelvic thrust to grab at your shirt, but you're just like, <laughs> the only thing you're grabbing is this, and she just can't do it. But yeah, it's perfect. Uh, so in that case, she's body. going to end her turn <laughs> there. Um, next is Crocus. Crocus, uh, Chenkis, sorry. Okay, uh, um, yeah, I guess, I don't want to attack these guys, but we're going to have to kill them anyway, I'm assuming. Ah. Uh... Yeah, we're going to lower this okay. action economy. Um, so, short stored attack. I don't know if these are the right numbers. Oh, this would be a short sword plus one. Yep. So you should be good. So that would be an 18. Yep. Absolutely. We'll hit. And then it does 10 piercing damage. Because apparently it's set up to roll damage automatically. Let me change yeah, it that. Happens. Well, so is it, it would be 11 because it's a plus one, right? Uh, yeah. Oh, it would be 11 piercing damage yep. as as well. Yep. So that's definitely a nice one, right. strong hit. Um and then my offhand would be a dagger. Yep. Except I don't get my modifier on this, right? Not unless so... you took the um No, I did not. Yeah. Um so I don't get my proficiency added to it. That's correct. That correct? Actually, I don't think it's proficiency or strength. Let me check. One moment. Um, you don't add your ability modifier to the damage, but you... Uh, hold on, I'm missing one. Uh, actually, so you're still rolling with your proficiency bonus and your dex mod. You just okay. don't add the bonus damage Extra to damage. It. Yeah. So it's just a d4 if it hits. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'll roll that. 16. Beauty. 16 will most certainly still hit. Okay, so then I'll just roll a d4. Mm -hmm. Two. Two more damage. Two. Not bad. 13 total. Uh, so this um, thing's looking pretty haggard. Hold on a second. Go right ahead. <laughs> Hell yeah. 
I'm going to re-roll that damage since I have piercer. Piercing. Yep, go for it. And... Nice. Got an One extra more. point. Absolutely. Yeah, so he's looking even worse for wear. Uh, you would say probably somewhere around uh, a third of the condition that he was in at start. That was my bonus action. I used my reaction. Well, oh, your, reaction, your reaction is actually technically back now since your turn is started. Top oh, of okay. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm good. Alrighty. So, next is Nuke. Okay. Um... Okay, we're gonna we're gonna try we're gonna try this. We got this. We can make it happen. Um, okay. I'm going to look at uh, Lord Augustus, mm -hmm. and I'm just gonna say, uh, see the green man. Uh, if you wish to help, I believe he has something for you. And I'm gonna look at the. The lady, I don't remember her name, but uh, just kind of say, uh, not coming from this high of cl class of people, how are you with a crossbow? My best bet is to take and make these people move to cover. Um, if anyone, it's best to arm my husband. Very well. Then I leave. <laughs> <laughs> you don't give him anything. All right. <laughs> well, yeah, I told uh, him to go see the. Yeah, I told him to go see. see uh, yeah, Chinkas. Okay. If. Uh, uh if so. Wants. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. No, that's fine. You can move. You're good. Okay. Yeah, I just want to come onto yeah. the other side Attacking of her. Attacking reaction. So, let's see. Is it five, ten, fifteen? It should be forty-five, unless uh, going through those people is going to stop me, or slow me down. Uh, no, I'll let you move through for free. That's fine. Okay. Um. Okay, so let me see if I can do this properly. So, actions. Okay, bonus action. Mm -hmm. so, so, the Crimson Right. Okay. Uh, which is, I believe, Crimson Right, right of the dawn here. Uh, so, I'm going to activate that on my sword, which I have to take 1d8 of damage. Wonderful. And it's an 8, because I'm awesome. <laughs> hurt yourself <laughs> real good. I rolled a high. There was my high rolls. Yeah. Right. Because you're hurting yourself, of course you're going to roll high. That's yeah. just the way it works. Yeah. So you all watch over as, like, blood starts seeping from Nuke's eyes for some reason. It's time. It's fucking weird. And then... Uh... Those are... I think those are all bonus actions. Yeah, okay, so that's what I was like. So now I can attack. Okay, perfect. So which curse did you hit her with, just so I'm more? I didn't hit her with any curse. I did the Crimson Right. Uh, oh, oh, Crimson Right. It, uh, it, yeah, it puts it on my weapon. So yeah. I didn't hurt her, but it makes it gives me extra damage when I do. Yeah, uh, I thought you had more than just that one. Okay, Crimson Right of Dawn. Sheds bright light 20 feet. You have resistance to necrotic. When you hit an undead with a weapon that has this right active, you have an additional 1d8. That's actually pretty damn good. Okay. Yeah, very cool. Okay. Okay, so I think I, so I've done that. That's yeah. my bonus action. Yeah. So now I think I can't really do uh, Like, everything is bonus actions. My actions are only attack. Yeah. So, yeah, well, so essentially it seems like the way the character works, just so you kind of get the flow, you're setting yourself up for success with your bonus actions to then go attack and kill things. Hmm. Perfect. Okay. That's okay. That's kind of what I was thinking. It yeah. was happening. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so it was smart of you to do your bonus action first as well. That's kind of. It seems like that's kind of what the the class is. Like you want to use your bonus actions to prepare your your main action and then go do it. Perfect. So. Okay. So then I'm going to attack, uh, Lady in Red. Beautiful. Is that twenty? Would... Yeah, that most certainly will hit. Um. So I, let's I, see. I think that rolled my damage too. It did. Yep. So you got nine from the scimitar, but currently you would also need to roll two more d8s for your right. Right, and then I—it's a plus one too, right? So it's actually. 10. Um, and it actually already has the plus one on it, I think. Two d4 uh -oh. plus four from strength mod plus one mod. 
Oh yeah, and... I put that in there to see if it worked. Yeah, yep, you're right. So it did. However, you will, I think, actually be hitting hitting one harder. Yeah. So you actually get a plus nine total. So you you rolled a twenty one instead of a twenty. Is all I'm saying. But yeah. Oh, I see. That's for the plus one. It's on both. It's on both. Oh, uh, okay. It doesn't on okay, both. So perfect. you're good. You, you where you added it is correct, and it also is a plus one on the attack. So oh, okay, uh, you rolled perfect. a twenty-one, and you got nine damage on that. You're all you're all perfect on that. Um, that? Just need the two d eights. D eights. Fours each. Look at that. Fucking perfect middling damage is still good damage. All right. So we've got ourselves a total of seventeen. Okay. And then I'm gonna attack her again because I get two attacks per Go for action. It. Absolutely. Or two Does the damage work on all hits, or is it just the first? It is on until I... That Crimson Rite is on until I do a long right. rest, I think. Weapon... View weapon to strike. On activating, you take extra... Yeah, I think you're good. Yeah, right damage is magical and lasts while you hold the weapon or until you complete strike a shorter for one long rest. Extra. Yep, absolutely. Hell yeah. This character's actually pretty dope. And it's actually, it was also a very good build for this mission, because you're dealing with undead. There was a lot of extra stuff you were getting out of it. Yeah, I looked at it, and I was like, oh, I gotta pick one, or whatever, yeah. and I was like, whatever, we'll do undead. No, no, it worked out very well for you. Okay, okay awesome, so, very cool. Oh yeah, 20, 22. 22 will most certainly hit, and, and you can give me another 2v8s. For another 8. Yeah. <laughs> another way to roll two fours. Yeah, I'm very that good at one. making the same number with different uh, die. Apparently. <laughs> yeah. Quick mess. Quick maths, yeah. Seven and eight, okay. Thirty, thirty-two. Total, yeah. Not bad, uh, not bad. Not bad at all. Very good numbers. And it, it only cost me eight damage. Yeah, eight, eight, eight to yourself, but yeah. Okay, yeah. beautiful. Uh, anything else you're looking to do? Uh. No, that's it. Okay. So in that case, um, this thing, it's now. The one that um, Chinkis attacked its turn, and it's going to rotate around to here, and all the people that are nearby, of course, are screaming and trying to escape from it, uh, and it's going to try and attack you, Chinkis. Um, let me see, what does it want to roll with? It's going to try and lunge at you with its claws first. Will a 12 hit you? I don't think so. You're like a... No, it's 12 or not. Yeah. I'm 16. Uh, it does not have advantage, so that's all it can do, and that's it for this turn for that one. Uh, its partner is now also going to start shambling up towards you, though. Makes its way that way, and now with advantage will also try and claw you. It will hit you with a 22. Wow. Can I uncanny dodge that? Absolutely. As can. a reaction. Um, yeah. So the total damage is seven, so having it we'll put it down to we'll call it three, round down. Okay. Um and but I will need you to succeed on a constitution saving throw. Good thing I gave you that Bardic die, huh? That should be okay. Um Constitution, you said? Yes, sir. Beautiful. 20. No problem at all. So yeah, um you just feel like there is some sort of strange um poison or venom in the the hands of this undead beast uh, that would have potentially, you know, um, stiffened up your muscles, but you were able to shake it off without issue. Uh, so that will be it for its turn. And at this point, the nobles can finally start to act. So Augustus and his wife, his fiance, will start to move towards this door, and they're going to yell for everybody. Hurry! Hurry, come this way! We will get us out! Hurry, come on! And he's, like, waving everyone, and she kind of stands off to the side to make sure that she doesn't get trampled uh, as he starts to kind of throw his shoulder into this door. Um, the Noel in green is going to see the commotion. He kind of quickly recognizes what's happening, and he grabs his wife's hand, and he just starts sprinting towards um, the stairs over here. And the people who are with him all see what's happening, but they respond much slower. Man, I cannot just grab those two, apparently. Um, so they're going to catch up later, and that should be 25, 30 right there. Yes, that is correct. Um, and the others are going to... All right, so she catches up to her husband, who at this point is still terrified. He sees what's happening, and he knows that what you said is true, and the vampire is here to kill him. 
and he screams out, I will not die here! I will be protected by the sun! And he turns around and he tears at these curtains. Uh, and as they actually come down and open, you would notice that that does indeed cause an outpouring of still good daylight to come into the room. Ooh. Mechanics, boys! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but that will be it for the nobles. Um, with that, it is the other creature's turn. Uh, and it's going to shamble over here towards you, Nuke, and try and give you a good old smack on the butt. Does my uh, bright light that comes out of my sword affect these creatures at all? Is it radiant light, or is it just bright light? I believe it's radiant. Then it sort of would, but it doesn't do anything directly. There you go. Um, let me see, let me see. Shed's bright light. No. It is, uh, a, it, is it is radiant damage, which is still very oh, important. But, oh, okay. um, the light itself will not stop the effects that some of these creatures have, like sunlight will. Oh, it literally says right there. I just looked at the top when it said damage yeah. type. Yeah, you're good, man. Uh, alright, so this thing's gonna try and swing at you with advantage, since you have an enemy on the other side of you. It will hit you with a 17, I think? Yes, I have 16. Okay. Uh, so you will take 6 damage as this thing wanders up behind you and swings at you. Yeah, Beautiful. awesome. Uh, that's that thing's turn. That's all it can do. At this point, the commoners can start to move, and they are going to do exactly what was told to them and start to swarm towards the doors over here. And the dwarf is going to start biting them, and they're going to all turn into vampires. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> so they're all just trying to get away. Oh, these guys as well, and these guys, and these guys are all going to run. Um, yeah, I think, can it do anything with that? No, so it's not going to have to worry about it. Okay, uh, so that will be all of them. All right, back at top, Zachariah. Do it. I think I will. Lowers his pants. <laughs> Continues the hip thrust he, as he's he doing knows, it. He knows the female vampire hates her. Yeah. I, I could stake her here, but I don't think that would be anyone's claim. Um, now you see me. Now you don't. And I'm going to cast greater uh, invisibility. Yes, sir. Go for it. So I believe no, that means... Siri, you're good. I don't need you to do anything right now. <laughs> Thank you. So I believe that means that you can pretty much do things while you're, you're invisible and it doesn't interrupt it or something? So, greater invisibility... Let me pull up the page for it here. Uh, me or a creature I touch becomes invisible until the spell ends. I can do attacks and it will not break right. its form unless an attack is concentration. And... That's pretty much it. It's a better form of invisibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I thought. The, the thing it gives you is that you could attack in it, basically. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. So I'm going to just mark myself as uh, yep. a little ninja. Perfect. And I'm going to step away. So she has One. no clue, and uh, she doesn't... So is, to... is therefore unable to opportunity attack you? Get to get to there. So let me see something. Sorry, one down. That one... And uh, as I'm walking away, bonus action, uh, bardic inspiration for a uh, for nuke. Okay. Are you ending your turn there? Um, action, bonus action, and movement. That is all I can do. So, okay. Um, so with the end of your turn, he's going to take a legendary action and close in on uh, nuke here, seeing him attacking his loved one. And then at the start of his turn proper, actually it really wouldn't have mattered since I don't think he's going to move again, but um, let's see. Uh, Blake, if you can get out of there on your turn, I have a wonderful thing for this. Wonderful. We're going to save that for later. He's just going to try and strike out at you with his hand. He has kind of clawed fingers that he goes to penetrate you with. And let's see. I don't think he'll hit with a 12. That was kind of low, especially considering advantage. Uh, two attacks means he can try again, though. With the second set, he's managing a 24, so that will hit you. Um, 
so these claws, as he extends them out, you take six piercing damage from the claws and another 12 necrotic damage. I don't know if you are... I think you have resistance to that right now or something? Yeah. God. Um, I don't know yes, how to check that. You do. From okay. your right of the dawn, it, your second bullet is you have resistance to necrotic damage. Oh. Um, so since that is active, then what did I tell you? 12? I'm not on that page right now. Uh, I'll be right back. i got to run to the bathroom. Uh, that 12 oh. becomes only 6 damage since it gets Wonderful. half by resistance. Um, yeah, so that was... What did I say? 7, seven and 6? Uh, sorry, 7 and 12? So, um, uh, I thought, no, sorry, yeah, 7 sure. and 6 because it was halved from 12. Sorry, yes, that is correct. So 13 total. Um, just to make sure we're on the same page. However, I will tell you... Your hit point maximum has been reduced by that six. The Iosers. For until the end of time, or until you finish yep. a long rest. Yeah, until the end of time. Until you until you finish a long rest, essentially. Um, and your character would know this because you've dealt with vampires before. Okay. Um, but I think that is all that it can do for its turn properly. Making sure, making sure. Yeah, everything seems cool. That's its turn. Now Ophelia is going to try and go again. She will also try and uh, swing out at you, though. She's going to do the same thing she did before. She's going to go with her knife first. Um, I think a 17 hits you, right? Let's just make sure she doesn't crit. Yep. So yep. 17 will hit. Oh, wait. I did that wrong. Uh, so it's going to be 8 damage with her dagger. And then she's going to try again to reach out with her other hand and pierce you with the claws on it. Uh, a 19 will hit. Let's make sure she doesn't crit. No, a 7 will not, so the 19 we will take. Uh, she's going to do 7 bludgeoning damage as she tries to grab onto your chest, and I need you to do a grapple escape so you can do athletics or acrobatics to try and escape this. 19. Yep. Perfect. So yeah, she is unable to grab you. Uh, and she shrieks out, and she's going to just try and strike you again. She gets three attack actions, so... This bitch. Yeah, she's got lots of action economy, but she's kind of lower numbers. Uh, an 18 will... I hit. mean, lower numbers, but she still chunked me for a third of my health. <laughs> she's yeah. fucking I mean, they're, me they're, they're strong. They're strong. Yeah. Uh, eight more damage. Blood Beautiful. Damage. Okay. Yeah, that's the only reason I left you there, man, because like, if I'm in close quarters, I'm a dead man. That's no problem. Uh, at this point, it is uh, uh, fucking uh, Chankis' turn. Brain didn't want to remember your name. Chankis. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> probably kind of ruined some plans here. That's okay. Um, going to bonus action disengage. Mm hmm. 5, 10, 15... They both have Sentinel, nine. so they're going to swing... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Could you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> um, can I can I open the curtains? Yes, sir. It'll take, I'm assuming it'll that take takes your action. action. Yes, sir. But yep. you can throw them wide open, and I will do that for you and present you with light. I have all the light pre-prepared. just got to go to the other layer. So. Ooh, Wonderful. Nice. <gasps> Wunderbar. So as that happens, the two to your south... Uh, screech out and cover their eyes and seem very much affected by this radiant sunlight. Um, and then 5, 10, 15, 20. Oh, that's actually in range. Nice. I guess. Yeah, I'll, I'll stand there. So that's action, bonus action. Awesome. I'm yep. good. Okay. Definitely good choices, though. All right. Uh, now we are on your turn, Nuke. Let's see what you can do in this situation. I thought All those right. were like fake curtains. Like I thought there was just yes. wall behind them. Uh -huh. Yeah. No, that's why I, I once you you gave me a very good way to uh, kind of introduce the mechanic with the scared guy. So I was kind of glad for that. My intention was always to have one of the nobles tear the curtains open once they knew what was happening, but that one was much easier because of you guys. <laughs> I, I'm using this kit to the best I can. So. Uh... Zach Zachariah's turned invisible and Correct. then just ran away. Well, you don't know where he is. You saw him turn He's invisible. That's about it. Still, still invisible. Yes. And they couldn't attack him because he was invisible. Yeah. Uh, they didn't. Yes, exactly. So they could try and attack him, 
but they don't know exactly where he is, so they'd try be trying to swing at space, so they basically would have disadvantage rolls and might not even be swinging at him anyway. So what they just decided was to go after the target they could still see. Interesting. So I'm going to turn invisible. Okay. <laughs> Do you have a skill that does that? I mean, you. I have, I have a feat <laughs> called Shadow Touched. Okay, yep, that one uh, will do it. I, I think that I can turn invisible. I believe that is the case, yeah. It should give you an at-will cast of invisibility. It's not Wonderful. the same invisibility, I think, as what... No, it's uh, not the same as his, no, because I was reading yeah. mine when y'all were talking yeah, about so his. I if, believe, I, if I do any actions, it, it pops goes you out. away. I, think, I believe you can just do this once a day with, uh, with Shadow once Touch. Long, yeah, once a long is rest. Is it long rest? Okay, so even better. Yeah. But yeah, no, totally would work. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. And I assume, I think I can only do one of those. I can't cast both those. Not at the same turn. You can do... No. You have one cast of each per long rest, but each of them costs an action. Okay, I see. So then what I'm going to do uh, is go over here to these blinds and open them. You're going to the southwest blinds, gotcha. Well, actually, hold on. That will be not the case because you are you used your action to turn invisible. So next turn, you can throw them open as your action. Actually, oh, does well, that? I have, I have two. I think don't I have two? All so right, what I'll do is I'll let you throw them open with one attack per action next turn. Um, but and let me fix this quick. No, that's um, yeah, that's. Good. But the this turn, the spell costs a full action to cast. So I'm just uh, okay. going to say that for this turn, it is um, not quite available yet. So you're over there, you're ready. Next turn, you can throw it open, and you'll still have one attack per action left. But um, and yeah, you made it there. They didn't. They didn't know how to attack you. They don't see you currently. So yeah, you're 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 set up correctly, but you can't quite get there yet. Okay, perfect. I didn't know that was an action. So that that's yeah, that was great. what Fred but... asked on his turn was uh, if it I... cost his action, and and I said yes. So got to be fair across the board. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I didn't catch that. Well, then, actually, I'm going to stop here and not make it all the way to the blinds. Totally fine. Uh, and then, as a bonus action, mm -hmm. I am going to... Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Which one? Uh, do a Blood Curse of Binding. Okay, let me just make sure uh, this won't affect the invisibility. Blood Curse of Binding or cast a spell. This is technically not a spell, right? Curse of binding. Creatures that don't have blood in their okay, bodies. Okay, I'm going to say, I think just for the sake of fairness, I'm pretty sure this is essentially a spell. Because, like, the way I'm looking at it is this way. you If you were to use a, a cantrip that's a bonus action right now, you could still do that very much like you could mm -hmm. this. And it could be a bonus action and have a DC and, and still function. But it's a spell, right? And I think this is, is kind of the same. It's a, it's a magical effect that kind of works the same way. So I'll tell you, you can do this on your turn. You still have a bonus action, but it will pop you out of invisibility. Yeah, that's fine. In order to do so. Okay. Yeah, Just fine. making sure that you understand the consequence there. Okay. Yeah. So which creature are you trying to target? Uh, the guy. The doctor guy. The doctor. Okay. So strength saving throw DC 14. Okay. Um, are you trying to amplify it for the full minute, or you just want it till the end of your next turn? Uh no that's fine I'm not gonna amplify it I'm just gonna have it for the until until the end of is it your next turn or is it two turns It's the end of your next turn I believe that's a good question Let me go back to it Double check uh, it again. I cannot take reactions until the end of your next turn Yeah you're okay, right Okay so you can choose to Okay uh, so you don't take the damage unless you amplify as well which is good to know Okay Okay so let's see if it passes the saving throw uh, 16 plus 420. So, yeah, it does not take hold. Holy shit. All right. <laughs> well, then, I still have... Sorry. I guess I'm just going to go kind of stand in front of these blinds. Um, okay. Do I need to be, like, dead center to be able to open No, no, no. Or... No, just okay. near it. You're good. Uh, so, I'm going to take... Uh, so, you are no longer on invisibility. So, they kind of lock eyes on you uh, as you come out of your turn. Uh, with that, it is going to be these things again. So you moved away. Um, so this one comes first, and it's going to kind of wander in on this side of you. And it's going to try and once again claw out at you. Uh, it will hit for six damage total, Fred. And I need you to do another con save. Beautiful. 22. Absolutely. 
so no issues. Um, this other one is going to try and go and flank you again, but as it does so, it kind of realizes it can't move into this space. So it's actually going to dumbly try and attack that space as if, you know... With disadvantage. Yes, sir, I'm rolling with disadvantage, don't worry. I believe a 9 will not hit you. It will not. So it strikes God. out, it misses you, and it's kind of hissing at midair, confused. Uh, but that is their turn. At this point, the nobles are going to try and break the door down again. So let me do this. Okay, that's one. All right. And then their turn. Okay. This creature is going to start sauntering up this way. It should be... And it comes a little closer, but it cannot quite make it to Chinkis. And the commoners are all going to try and push the doors again. And it's back at the top of the turn order with Zachariah. Cool. I am going to very sneakily pink panther my way this way. Do, 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 do. And I'm going to drop concentration on the invisibility. Okay. And I am going to wall of fire these two bitches inside of a center. The vampires? Ring of fire. Yep. Wall of fire or ring of fire? Wall of fire. But I'm going to make a square with it, essentially. I see. Okay. Square of fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got a square hammer, the bitches. So. It's uh, a burning square of fire. <laughs> I can make up to 60 feet of fire. Uh, 20 feet high, foot thick, or a ringed wall up to 20 feet in diameter, 20 feet high, and a foot thick. Mm -hmm. The wall is opaque, lasts for duration. And I'm just going to basically make it so that they are trapped inside of a perfect area. So you want to put it around them, not through them? Around them. They cannot leave that area. They are essentially trapped. Okay. Are you trying to make it bigger than them, or just kind of like, like this? No, nope, sort of I'm basically going to make a perfect square with them in it. Yeah, so kind of like that? Yeah, so, and because the fire is pushing in, they're taking damage so long as they're in there. I'm not sure that's how that works. Yeah, that's what I want it's, it. So yeah. it, makes a vertical, so... it makes a vertical wall as part of the way the spell Right, but, the, but so you you have one side that, like, pushes out heat or flame or something like that. Yeah, is what it and says. I want the inner so side that... to be the side that's taking that. So it like, being within five feet of that makes you take damage is okay. like how wall of fire is so he's yeah. saying he wants that damage that's the same thing that um yeah but i think the difference did. is it's the, the way that would work is they'd have to basically be on the space right it just makes no it, so it makes it so that it's not it's not that the wall has a five foot radius on either on the side of it it's just that it takes in it just has heat in that five foot space right here i'll uh i'll, so I'll let's, click yeah the, the it, can you bring up it? the one sec yeah, it says, one side of the wall selected by you when you cast a spell deals uh -huh. 5d8 fire damage to each creature that ends its turn within 10 feet uh, of that side of the wall, or okay. inside so, the wall. So yes, so that in that case, if it projects 10 feet out, then that would be the case. Because the, what, yeah. what I mean is, if it was only 5 feet, the wall is only 1 foot thick, right? I'm pretty sure that was stated in the, in the, the yeah. spell. Oh, it's yes, not, yes. Actually, it's not so, actually on so the, the original, uh, like the initial 5 feet, would have been just the five foot space that the the wall takes up, right? But if it is ten feet out, then yeah, it's an extra five on top of it. Yeah, uh, I'll, 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 I'm, I'm he can, he can just copy paste it. But yeah, it's it's when they end their turn at that point or start their turn. Um, ends its, it's turn. The okay. last paragraph. A creature ends takes ends the ends damage turn. when it enters yeah, the wall for the first time or ends its turn there. Yeah, so I guess it would take its damage now, uh, and then if it ends its turn. When the wall appears, each creature within its area, it's they're not in its. Well, I guess. Huh. When it appears, if they are within the yeah, area, they make a the dex save still. throw. And then at that point, when they end their turn within it, okay. So. Um, so I need roll. to do a dex saving throw. What's your DC? Fourteen or fifteen? Seventeen. Seventeen. Yikes. Rest? Okay. And if they <laughs> fail, they're going to be taking thirty-two fire damage. <laughs> So one will pass, the other will fail. So it's halved for the one who passes, I believe? Yes. So yeah. they will take only 16. 16. 16. That was so. a good roll. That was amazing. Three sevens and an eight. Oh, actually, they both pass. Oh, it doesn't balls. matter. It's still it's still 16 on both. Still I didn't, 16 damage. I didn't, I didn't realize the one that failed can just force a, a success if it wants. What the fuck? 
Yeah, it can only do it a certain yeah, number of times. Legendary vampires. resistance. Yeah, it only can do it a certain number of times, so. Well, at least I burned one of the legendary resistances. Yeah, well, certainly. <laughs> hey -oh. And the bigger thing is actually that your its regeneration is not working because you've stopped it in sunlight. I actually would say that's probably the bigger mm -hmm. key is uh, holding it where it is. But yeah. Regardless, uh, anything else? Oh, you you ran away. Okay. We didn't start the fire, but because it was always burning, and I'm gonna make you turning. Okay. And I run this way. That's me. Okay. Because I've already given out two bardics, and they haven't been used yet, so I can do nothing else with them. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just, I'm just trying to understand something here. That's interesting. Hey, um, Fred, do either you of post, you gentlemen... Was that the entirety of the spell you posted? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay. Except for the addition. The upcast. Yeah, the upcast. Mm -hmm. But that was a spell given to me from the liar, so I cannot upcast it. So right. I did not. Um, Fred and Blake, do either of you have offensive or healing spells of any kind? No. No, I don't think Spells? So. Yeah. Okay, okay, never mind. That That's a... Okay. I can't use that then. Never mind. So, if that's the case, I think it works this way. He's going to try and escape. Because he's in sunlight, the only way he can do that is physical movement. So he's going to try and move through your wall. So, passing through the wall... He would take more damage, I believe. I believe that is correct. Is it another deck save, though, is my question. Probably. Oh, fucker. I mean, anytime I you so. are damaged by the wall, you take another dexterity check. I don't think that's the case. Um, the dexterity check it's mentioning is only on the wall appearing. Could, the wall does continuous damage if you're up close to it, though. Yes, but what I'm saying so... is I'm pretty sure that the third paragraph is distinctly separate from the second one. When the wall appears, the second paragraph is what happens. Once the wall is there, I'm pretty sure the third is what's going on. So I think you need to just roll 5d8s. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. it, just, it just happens. They don't get a chance. Yeah, I think so, once it's there. So I think, I think essentially what it's saying is they have a chance to dodge out of the way when it's being created. But mm. once it's there, it's just fire. You kind of have to deal with it. All right, your call. Yeah, I think that's how we're going uh, to play 19. Because I don't see any real other way to read that. Okay, no problem either way. Uh, so. More concentration. Do we have a cogwheel? Yeah, there we go. Close enough. Okay, um, so it makes it through. Okay, yeah, it's looking very scarred up from that. Um, I didn't really use an action to do that, though, so it's going to come out here, take its damage, and kind of look around. It sees the two of you, uh, and it's going to run over at you, Zachariah, because it only has so much movement. 5, 10, yeah, 15, it can just barely make it to you. I only have one request, not the face. <laughs> Uh, it will. <laughs> Go for the face. Definitely the face. That's all I heard. Actually, hold on a sec. I might, I might do this differently. Not the face or the hair. A gentleman's brawl. Um, no, we'll try it this way instead. It's going to just try and strike it at you and make you drop concentration. Um, I am a war caster, so I have advantage on this. That's fine. It will not hit the first attack. It will hit the second one. Okay. You are going to take eight damage... And I need you to do uh, a grapple escape. R rolling that on the wrong program, and holy shit, that was loud. Uh, um, yeah. I didn't realize D&D &D Beyond had sound effects for the dice now. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's brutal. Definitely. And a hand that grabs the die. Yeah, yeah that's real loud, too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, 17. Okay, just barely under. Uh, he is just holding you right now, is all. No extra effect. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, let me roll my... Yeah, so it was... Yeah, concentration. I rolled an 8, so it's yep. a, what, a 10 for the concentration roll? Yeah, you're good. I rolled an 18. Yep, you're good. Um, okay. Well, and it would have been plus your con still, I think. Uh, yep. So that would have been a 19. Yeah, so just for future reference, because you never know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, okay, so then you're still good on concentration, and he's holding you by the shirt, but that's about it. Uh, and that's the end of his turn. Yeah, okay. Uh, the other one now is kind of going to just try and center herself as far away from all of the fire as she can, as she thinks about what to do. 
Yeah, she's just gonna kind of hole up in the middle. She's gonna take a dodge action, essentially, in order to just keep herself far enough from the heat to not take the damage this turn. But she's gonna lock herself dead center in order to do that. Um, so yeah, that's it for now. Uh, Chenkis. Hey, um, I guess top guy, since he's the one that's injured. Yes, sir, please do. Fort uh, sword. 22. Yeah, okay, 22 will certainly hit. And... 7, which I am going to reroll that with Go my piercer. Yep, love that feat, that's a good one. Uh, I guess I can click that. 11, yep. beautiful. You changed 11. it from what would not have killed to a hit that will most certainly kill as this thing heals over dead. Okay, can I use my bonus action attack? Yep, you can still attack anything else with it. Alright, and then I attack the guy that's next to me. Absolutely. The dagger, only a 15 on the Still dagger. Hits, though. And so it's, it's not 9, it's, it's only 4 though. 4. Still a max yep. roll. 4. You s stab into this other thing's chest and it uh, it hisses out at you as it seems to take quite a bit of painful damage. Anything else you want to try and do? Um, so since the dwarf is not coming over... Can I drop the dagger and use my hand axe as an offhand? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, that's it. Yep, no worries. All right. Uh, in that case, Snook, you're up. All right. Uh, you said I can use one of my actions to open these blinds? Yep, and then you'll still or have one, one attack you can do. Okay, well, then I will open these blinds. Mm-hmm. And then I will move up here uh -oh. and attack this guy. Uh, there we go. Beautiful. It, was just, it Beautiful. won't let me grab that thing. I was wondering if I maybe put it on the map layer, but nope. Uh, crit. <laughs> yes, that is most certainly a crit. This guy. So Even the game is like, you die now. Roll four d8s, good sir. Uh... God, another eight! Another eight out of it, though. <laughs> the game will only give you so much damage. It says a D8, so you'll 17, only allow eight. 17, 25 total? Yes. All right. Still a great hit, though. Anything then, else you want to do? Uh, yeah, what did I... 15... Oh, whoops. I'm just going to move down here. Fucking do that. That's fine. Okay, so it's going to... It actually has a lot that it can do here because of that. Okay, um, it's going to try and reach out at you with its other hand for an unarmed strike. So it can't uh, take an opportunity attack against me because I have mobile. Okay, did not know that beforehand. I, and that I is, didn't that's either, fine. and I realized that, that after. Yeah, it I realized will that after still, I left however, the utilize the... Uh, I'm assuming you're ending your turn. Uh, uh No. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, uh, what else you got? Uh, uh, I can bonus action a blood curse on him. Disadvantage on the next one. So, uh, so what that? How do? Which? What is it? What is it? Is it a strength saving throw? This doesn't say there's a saving throw at all. For which one? It's the blood curse of bloated agony. Um. Yeah, there's no saving throw for that one, it looks like. Alright, well I guess I'm just going to do that, uh, but I will amplify it? No, I'm not going to amplify it, I don't care. That's good, it's good okay. how it is. That's good fine, alright. So, at the end of your turn, it's going to use one of its legendary uh, reactions to try and bite at... Zachariah and knock him from his concentration. Bite will hit. Okay. Uh, it only is going to do five piercing and ten necrotic, so fifteen total. The necrotic lowers your health total until long rest by ten. Okay. Um, so fifteen total, you said? Yes. Uh, so I rolled an 11 from my constitution saving throw. So either half of 15 or 10, so you're fine. Well, I mean, it'd be, five, it'd be 5 or 10. 
Because those is that were those two individual attacks or was that one? It's one attack that does necrotic and piercing. Okay, I thought there was two separate attacks. Yeah, so it's it's 15 total, so it's still half 15 is less than 10, so it's 10, 11, you're past, so you're good. Okay. Uh, in that case, though, it is now this thing's turn. It's going to try and saunter up here again, and it finds it is able to. So it's going to swing while trying to block your path. Um, and that's going to miss pretty horribly. So that's Excellent. that thing's turn. The nobles will continue to try and open the door. Strength roll. Nope, that one's a failure. Uh, and the other thing will saunter up close to you as it can get and try and swing as well. I don't think that'll hit with an 8 though. Nope, okay. Yikes. That's alright, happens. Commoners are going to try and help with the door. Strength at disadvantage. The guy's still screaming yeah. about vampires. No, he's just kind of cowering. He keeps looking out over the crowds and trying to make sure that it's not coming closer. Thankfully. Uh, Zach Zach Zachariah, back at you. <coughs> Good sir. Do you know the sound of your ass, your wife's ass cheeks clapping? And Quite Thunderwave. well, yes. Go for it. He's going to do a deck save, is that right? A con save, actually. Okay. And I feel like he's good at those, unfortunately. Uh, what's a 17 do for you? Uh, 17 meets. Yeah, 13 plus 4. Me meets, Sorry. beats. So, I know, so save but so he doesn't take... move, but he's half damage, right? Yeah. Yeah. And what spell level am I doing this at... Yeah, fuck it. I want to hurt him. We're going to do this at level 3. Go for it. So, we're looking at, what, 27 total? 27 total. Very nice. Very nice. It's looking pretty hurt. And... Wow, two eights. I mean, I'm not meant for close quarters, and I'm having a hard time getting away. So, you know what? I'll take what I can get. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are you talking about? You have fly. <laughs> I know, but that's a concentration spell. Uh, and yeah. I'm currently trying to charbroil one of the vampires. Yeah, action economy. Um, has any of you used my bardic inspirations yet? Nope. I don't think so. Haven't okay, needed to. then I have no reason to do that. Um... Do we both have that? Yes. Yep. Oh. Yeah, I gave you one on uh, my last turn. I missed that completely. Da -da -da. It's a plus that... 10. Or, or D10. Oh. I'm sorry. A, Not plus a, 10. A, a, D10. a D10 to. Yeah. Uh, to saves. any ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. Yeah. Beautiful. Can be used after seeing the roll, but not before knowing the result. I.e., if he doesn't say pass or fail. Okay. Um. So, can I make a bonus action attack with a dagger because it's a light weapon, or no? No, you have to have swung with a light weapon first. Okay. Well, that specifies specifically a weapon attack, so I can't do that. Yeah, that's me. Alrighty, no worries. Big uh... man, can you a little help over here? Very right. well. So it is the vampire's turn. Mm -hmm. So it's going to. Hey, Bagman? Did you say Bag Bagman? You, do you need my help? Either or! Either or! <laughs> <laughs> uh... Okay, so I need you to do a wisdom saving throw, Blake. Wisdom oh. save? Oh, actually, wisdom. you know what? I've kind of already called it, but I think I might be making the wrong choice here. Uh, you have advantage on this. I am making the wrong choice, but that's okay. Too late now, I've kind of already made my move. So you have advantage on this wisdom save. 13. And you also you have the D10. You Please uh, roll the D10. Yeah, I mean, fuck it, we'll just put the D10 on it as well. Yeah, Chris was quick enough. Oh, wonderful! Uh, with that, you will still fail. Currently, you are now charmed by the vampire. As it glares over at you, and a glow enters its eyes. Uh, Wait. 
I could do a thing. Hang on. Go for it. I think I could do a thing. Uh, oh, that was you calling my advantage on the roll. Yes. Wonderful. At least you're you're keeping track of my character. <laughs> I realized it as I fucking said that I was going to try that on you too. That that was probably the wrong choice, but. Oh uh, no, that would basically give him what he already has. Never mind. Okay. Um. So you can't attack the charmer, uh, or you hit it with harmful abilities or anything. Uh. And currently, you believe um that this vampire needs is a trusted friend that needs to be mm -hmm. heeded and protected. Um. You're not directly under the vampire's control, so you can still do what you want. But you will very much listen to anything that it requests of you, and your actions are taken in a way that is most favorable to the vampire. Um, with that, it's just going to look at you and uh, say, Either rescue my wife, or help me end these two. And with that, its turn will end. Uh, and the other one... It's just going to do the same thing, try and keep herself from taking damage. Because uh, I don't think she has anything that she can escape with, right? No, she definitely doesn't. Uh, so, it is... <sighs> My brain is not remembering your name, Fred. Chenkis' turn. Chenkis! To the rescue! I'm gonna do oh my character sheet went away because I reloaded the page. Yeah, that happens. There we go. Time. Um you know he's gonna he's gonna do the same thing, you know, without sneak attack because nobody's No one near has been him. nearby, yeah. The guy that was near me walked away as soon as it was his turn. Uh so yeah, we're just gonna stab the guy to the south of me. Okay. The the guy that had been hidden. Yep, and the last one that you hurt. Yep. Short sword. Go for it. That will hit. Uh, wow. Okay. Yeah, these are not and super hard it, to hit. If it makes you feel any better, when he was there before, I stopped him from getting advantage on you. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, I'm I'm okay with that. Um, yes, twelve will most certainly do some good damage to it, but it is still alive. He's still alive. Okay, so then you get hand axe to the face, buddy. Yes, he does. I'm the, I'm the in, uh, inspiration, bardic Go for inspiration. It. You said it nice and quick. Um, D10. No, oh man, Chris, <laughs> love that you're trying, but those are not helping. Uh, a ten will give not us hit. Weighted die. <laughs> I gave you nothing but good things. You guys just don't know how to use them. <laughs> wow. Good try, though, man. <laughs> okay. Not much All you can right. do with that. Thanks, guy. Uh... <laughs> yeah, that was action bonus action. So that's. Was me. it? Oh, I guess it was. Yeah. Okay. Offhand attack is bonus yeah, action. Yeah, I realized. Yeah, I, I was thinking about that. I'm like, Rogue doesn't have another attack by level 11? No, it's you don't get one at level weird. 5. That's why I think that Rogues are a better uh, off uh, fucking multi-class. Yeah. Um, regardless, that was a good try. I, I mean, next time I'd suggest maybe bonus action disengage and go on near somebody else, but, you know, each their own. Uh, yeah, but that... I don't know. It's just one guy over there for the two of them. Yeah, I know, but it is a beefy guy as well. Who knows? One way or the other, yeah. it was still a good turn. You you actually hit a, a very solid hit with that 12 regardless. So, um, It is now that thing's turn, though, and it's going to try and give revenge. Uh, it's... That's got a miss, right? What's your AC? 16. Yeah, okay, 14 will miss, yes. Uh, Noble's turn. Let's do another roll from you guys. That's another pass. That's good. And then this other thing next to you will again try and attack you. 21 will hit you on that one. Okay. 21 uh, hits. Yeah. Only three damage, though. Low roll on the damage number on that one. Okay. Okay. That's that thing's turn. Commoners are up. Let me do a disadvantage strength roll for you fuckers. Yeah. Still clear. They're not helping very much, but they're at least trying. And Zachariah is up. Okay. I am going to use Tasha's Mind Whip at... That's one that says... At fourth level. Mm -hmm. And I think I have it on a page here. Uh, did I program it in? Yeah, I did. Um, so, because I'm casting it at fourth level... I can target three creatures with this. Okay. Do you have to be able damage to doesn't change? Uh, no, they just have to be within thirty feet of each other. Okay. So, 
they need to make an intelligence save of the DC-17, mm-hmm. and it's going to be target one, target two, target three. Uh, if they fail the save, they take full damage and have no reaction. If they make the save, it's half damage, and they keep the reaction. Okay. Moreover, on its next turn, it must choose between whether it gets to move, an action, or a bonus action. Only one of the three. Yeah, so both of the vampires passed, but the ghoul failed. So that's half damage for both of them, I believe? Uh, half damage for the two of them, so they only take seven. That's okay. Still, That's still damage, at least. That's kind of... Yeah. Like... Um, and then uh, the other you know one what? the other one will take hmm. the full damage, though, 15, which is going to kill it outright. Its brain explodes. It it, it gets a it gets scattered. Yes, it gets scattered. Um, yeah, it just that blows up was my from face. scanners. <clears throat> I'm just gonna keep that tabbed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. So this is where I need an opinion on this. Um, Don't do it. Choose life. On a failed save, it can't do these things. Period. Moreover, on its next turn, it must choose one of these things. And on, okay, on, no, on it's, it's hang yeah. on, you're right. It, it's only on a fail. On a success, yeah. none of those other effects happen. Yeah. Yeah, moreover <laughs> is usually a continuing phrase, right? So Okay. Damn it, I was really trying to make this dude only be able to do one thing. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was a cool cool try, for sure. Anything else you want to give a shot to? Uh, you can bardic fuck inspire it, why not? I am going to bardic inspire um <laughs> one of us. Oh, uh, I guess me because the because other guys charm. I well, he has to be able to make wisdom saving throws on his turns, I think, right? I don't remember. I'm assuming he can make saving throws on his turns. Rick would have to read the... the... I'm reading it, but I'm also not going to tell you. you. You'll find Hello. out on his turn. All right, well, that, that, the, that makes sense. In the event that he gets that ability, I want him to have a d10 to try and break out of his stupor. And that's it. I mean, I can't move. No, that's fine. Just wanted to make sure... <laughs> <laughs> um, I, all my attacks that have been trying to make this guy drop me haven't yeah. been working. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. I mean, you find a vampire though. It's definitely a tough, tough level enemy. Um, so it is its turn at this point. It will look over to you, Blake, and as a free action, talking to you, just you must help me, friend. Please handle the one to the north, so that I may free my wife. And then it will ignore you from that point. Uh, and it's just going to try and bite you, I think. Um, Cody, yeah, it will hit another bite. I mean, I've got the... So he the... still has... He he has to, like, do what he says, but he has free will on to how he, how he does, does it, it, right? Correct, yes. Okay. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll, I'll reread, reread it just for the sake of clarification. Um heeds the vampire as a trusted friend ne- sorry, it, the vampire is a trusted friend that needs to be heeded and protected although the target is not under the vampire's control, it takes the vampire's requests or actions in the most favorable way it can and is willing a willing target for the vampire's bite attack uh, speaking of as it chomps down on you Chris, you take 18 damage. 18? Yes sir. 8 from yeah. piercing and 10 from necrotic I'm uh, I'm not looking too good, guys. I could use some help. <laughs> uh, but that is it. That's all it's going to do on this turn because its joints hurt and it feels the pain. I rolled a 14, more. so I believe I still keep my concentration. Uh, yes. 18 would be 9 or 10, so correct. Uh, the other one is still just going to wait. She's just going to wait her turn. The Wall of Fire, I'll tell you, has definitely done a good job of locking at least one of them down, though. As much as you are getting hurt, you're only getting hurt by one because of it. <laughs> so I, that was the idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at this point, it's Chenkis' turn. Um. Yeah. Yes. It kind of ruined it, but um, this is thirty feet, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess I'll bonus action disengage this guy that just kind of like. Bonus action disengage because that guy doesn't hit me for anything, so yep. I don't really care about him absolutely and i am going to hit this dude with my short sword go for it fuck him up now i'm not technically certainly hesitated so do you get sneak attack he does i do i do get sneak attack as long as you're within five feet yeah 
And this is up. this is gonna be this is gonna be the the, big the one. chinkish show right here. I'm finally gonna show my my four foot power. <laughs> you stab um, him in the dick. I get it. So I rolled a two, so I'm gonna re-roll that with yep. my piercer. Please do. Yes, an That's extra better. point is eight. nine damage. Hey man, anything's better than it was, right? And then we're gonna roll sneak attack, which yes, is sir. uh six d six. Yep. Eleven half uh, up, round up. Yep. The ones are nice. great, but the fives are are pretty fucking killer. So another twenty two on top of that. Is I'm not done yet. Painful. I'm not done yet. Focus. Yeah, hold I'm aware. your horses. I'm aware. I know what you're doing. Let's go for I'm it. I'm using whales from the grave. Yep. So you're gonna doing hit another. Else. Yeah. Uh, three d six necrotic damage, thirty feet. So I think the only person within thirty feet of this target is this one. Yeah. Yes, that sir. Guy's that is correct. Feet. So I'm going to hit the chick. With whales from the grave. 3d6. Yes, Just like your mom last night. <laughs> good rolls. Good yeah. fucking great, that was a good one. Great rolls on sneak on both of them, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, um, you just hear a... So she kind of screeches out in the fire. You can't see her in there. But, um, you know, you know how your, your, your whales work. And uh, you can tell that they are most certainly taking hold on her in there. Yeah, I think that is it. I feel I feel like Mace normally does. <laughs> but that didn't crit. Yeah. If you well actually to be fair, the closest one to Mace right now in terms of build is probably uh Nuke over here. With that crit he hit earlier, he rolled yeah. like four D eights plus four D eights, four D fours. He just rolled low. <laughs> he did. Yeah. But uh still great turn. Fantastic turn. You have both of them uh, screaming out and hurting quite a bit. Uh, at this point, it is, however, your turn, Nuke. Uh, and I will remind you, you have been asked to assist the vampire. Specifically, he asked you to go after Chenkis, but it is your choice what to do. So, like, do I have to attack him with, like, everything I can attack him with, or do I so just... So I'll read, it, I'll read it again to you, just whatever you feel is, is most fitting of these guidelines. You trust the vampire as a friend that is to be heated and protected. Um, you know, you you are not being controlled by it, so you're making your own choices. But you you will take its request to heart, um, and you know you you will make actions that are most favorable towards the vampire. So you want the most favorable outcome for it. Um, so whatever you feel is necessary to do that. Damn it. I don't like this. I yeah, don't. being charmed is never fun, but it is also one of those things that really can can create some very fun, tense moments. So, so I guess we'll. And move. since it's his turn, does he roll a wisdom save again? Or he has no? not had to yet. Okay. Then I guess I will move here, mm -hmm. um, and then I will attack Chinkus with my. Double-bladed scimitar. I don't know why, but I have. I have to. Will a fifteen hit you, Chinkus? No. Nice. Sixteen AC. Beautiful. Stay strong. Big guy, keep oh, God guy. damn it! Oh, oh, oh no! <laughs> well, the good news is you're not undead, but. And even better news, you still have your uncanny dodge. That's that what I was true. just gonna say. No, no matter what he rolls here, two, uncanny dodge this damage. Two D eight then. Yes. So a Final total of twenty seven. Oh sorry, uh twenty five brain did a thing. So half Reduced half, half, half. say is twelve. Twelve and a half hat rolled down. Okay. So or um rounded down. Alright. Twelve damage, you son of a bitch. Yeah. Considering it could have been way worse. We it we take those. Definitely could have. Okay. So I'm assuming that's the end of your turn there. Uh, I would like it to be. Yes, yes. Okay. That seems good. <laughs> I would like it to be. <laughs> Very fair, dude. We all trust me. I've I have been in those shoes. I get you. Uh, uh, all right. Let's I see. feel like this happened in the last campaign too. Uh, yeah. People have definitely been trying. That's another success. Okay. So you guys would actually hear as the doors finally creak and break up in the west, and one of the nobles just screams out, "It's open! Everybody out!" And uh, the the kind of people start cascading out those doors, but that's a little later. Uh, it is now the zombie's turn. It's going to try and shuffle. 5, 10, 15. 
20, and it's stupid, so it's just going to attack what it thinks is still an enemy. It what? It will hit you with a 23. Um, you're going to take 6 damage, and I need you to do a saving throw at this point with advantage. It is a... I think it's the, uh, the same one as before, but I just want to make sure... Wisdom saving throw, Constitution. yeah. Constitution. Wisdom. Yeah, wisdom with advantage. With advantage... There you go. You save no problem. And with a crit save on that, I'm going to say that it is impossible for you to be charmed by this vampire again as you come to realize that it has been playing in your mind and you swat away the fog with an experienced uh, focus as you kind of redouble your efforts to kill this thing. So you have now cleared yourself from that brain fog. Uh, the zombie's turn is over. The commoners are all going to start to just disappear out the door where they can and when they can. Let's just keep shuffling all them forward. What Sakurai should have did, wall of fire around himself, facing <laughs> outwards. outwards. Yeah. <clears throat> then now I'm safe and I don't care about my friends. But well, I mean, he could he cast spells. He could do whatever <laughs> from within it, right? Yeah. People might, aren't going to. I might like them. the burning ring of fire, but only in a <laughs> metaphorical sense. All right. So uh, at this point, though, it is Zachariah's turn to be back to that. All right. Oh, I do have a bonus action I could have been using. Uh oh, fucker. <laughs> uh, bonus action healing word on myself. Probably smart. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this whole time. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm gonna fifth level that shit. Go for it. Um, that's uh, healing word. Eighteen. Yikes. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. At first, I thought it was the bottom number. I was like, Ugh. I mean, technically uh, it is, no. but yeah, it's both. <laughs> so, bonus action in that. Yes. So, eighteen more points back to you is fantastic. Yeah, I might survive another attack. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh. I'm gonna smash your wife <laughs> and flame strike on his wife. Interesting. Okay. So is that a dodge DC or is that a uh, okay dex save? Dex. Uh, is it half on save or is it? Uh, I can just show description here. Yes. Uh, Roars down from the heavens. Location you specify each creature ten foot forty high cylinder. Damn. Um, very nice. Okay. So she needs to do dex save. I mean, my, my saves have been beaten at every turn so far. She's not going to pass that one. Excellent. So she's going to take 25 damage, 15 of which is fire, 10 of which is radiant. Yes, sir. Uh, so with that, you hear a shriek as she seems to be burning alive. Can't quite tell. There's a lot of fire. Anything else? Nope, still trapped here, so. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. Just want to make sure. Okay, so at this point it will regenerate because it has not been hit by sunlight or uh, radiant damage. Oops, did that backwards. Um, so it regenerate the you watch the vampire regenerate a little bit as it's holding on to you, um, and it's going to. I am not your typical bard. I don't know how to pull out. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, you are the typical bard <laughs> then. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, I think it's just going to go for the full the full Nelson on. It's going to strike out at Chinkis with its hand, and it's going to bite down uh, at Zachariah. I think a 23 will hit Chinkis. Yep. A 16 hit you, Zachariah? Everything hits me. I don't, I don't know what that means. Everything hits me. So, you have <laughs> Fred, you're going to take 9 damage. Um, okay. And Chris, with the bite, you take 9 and 12 is 21. Thank God I healed my ass. Yes, sir. And then he takes 1d8 of necrotic damage. That is correct, because he has attacked twice. So you can go ahead and roll a d8 for me. Oh, I actually man. forgot about that. Where was I my 8 Where was my eight then? I actually failed that, d uh, that saving throw, so uh, the wall flame is gone. Yep, okay. So you watch the wall dissipate, revealing only a charred corpse. Oh! Yeah. Someone's going to be mad. He pissed. Uh, he very <laughs> mad. Um, as he looks over and sees nothing left but ash kind of dusting at this point in the winds of this hall, uh, what little ones there are. Uh, and he screams out, feeling five 
points of, uh, what is this damage though? Necrotic or radiant? Necrotic. I oh, think, yeah. I think then he only yeah. takes half. Yeah, so he only takes half of that, so he would take two. Uh, okay, but he still takes the damage. And that's still going to be the end of his turn, though. Uh, he attacked twice. He did everything he could. Um, it is Chinkus' turn. Right? Is that well, I have, I'm, I'm in the spot to do the damage, though... Might as well give it another shot. Um, I'm going to go over here, though, yep. to do it. Yes, sir. Now he's got advantage. Look at this guy being I can, smart. Can, I can do the stuff with the things... And the attacks, that's Ooh. crit. Ooh. <laughs> this guy's probably going to die then. It might have been but up you, in the air, but with this, but it's you don't very understand. Likely. Is that, my friend, is that perfect penetration range? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got... 14 up front, and then a whole uh, fuck ton so, of die to roll. And then 12 D6. Yes, sir. So that... That didn't... Okay, so that's... Okay, so now I do... You have to 12 do the 12, D6 for yep. sneak sneak attack okay yes sir uh d6 uh how do i do slash well... r space 12 d6 yeah or you can just hit your sneak attack button twice i don't have a sneak attack button okay uh oh my, oh my god oh hell, hell yeah <laughs> those and are then... also good rolls fantastic and then yeah. whales, whales from, from the, the grave. grave on the last one go for it so is that only three d six, or is that it's count all damage? Double, yeah. It's all damage. It's double doubled. Doubled. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that it definitely so counts that's as part of the same move. that's sixty six on the guy above. Uh, yep. Who has not no. been hurt yet? I'll point out. So let's see if you can kill him in one. Twenty one. Okay. So let's do this. Proper is what do we say? Fourteen forty five. So is fifty fifty nine up front on him, and. 21 on you. So, very interesting. Okay. So you take and you shove your short sword uh, into the, the back of this vampire. Uh, and it kind of um, pierces deep. And at first you think you've killed it. But you actually come to realize that it is still kind of moving on your short sword. Um, the zombie to the north, however, falls over completely and utterly dead. Okay. I will tell so... you as well that since you have the short sword in this man, um, you can feel how weak he is. It seems as if he is just barely clinging to life, and perhaps there is something, an external extra force that is keeping your blade from finishing it off for good. Otherwise, it would most likely be dead from your blow. Meaning, if I attack with my bonus action, it's not going to kill it. It's a high, high likelihood from what you currently believe. Uh, okay. So, grapple and shove. I don't have... I have shove, an idea. Shove's like a special ability, though. I have an idea. Okay. Yeah, so... <laughs> basically, I'm going to shout out to the group that... Uh, push Leave it into the light. In. Leave your sword in him. Push, push it in the light. Uh, and so, is that how you want to end your turn with your leave your blade in him? You're still just kind of in the middle of stabbing him, or? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to like wiggle it around as um. Absolutely. <laughs> as I'm telling, push him into the light. Yep. Absolutely. Uh... So in that case, it is going to be your turn. Nuke. Looks like I'm jerking off. Just <laughs> <you guys. laughs> with the short sword, just constantly. Yeah. Basically, Zachariah is over there thrusting his hips into the air to try and get away. You're in behind him, shoving a short sword in and out of his back, like basically the most awkward-looking Eiffel Wait, Tower this, in the world. Is this what an orgy is? Yeah, yeah, this is exactly it. Now you're like, I stuck it in him. I think I'm doing my part at the orgy. <laughs> Zachariah's just like, don't it poke it through too far. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You don't over it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's I. That's I guess it. Okay, okay. so Nuke, you are up. I have uh, to grapple to move him. I'm gonna look over my shoulder, and see the the guy behind me. Is... Yeah, it's you see a, essentially a, a dead body on the ground. It's a hand kind of outstretched as if it had been reaching towards you at one point, but it is inert and completely immo immobile. Excuse me. Uh, and then I'll look at the three of these guys in front of me and just go. Uh, very well. And um, full sprint, Spartan kicking, like double drop kick, 
this dude, this vampire dude, towards the high rope. Absolutely. The light. So a shove action, I believe, exists. Is it on D and D Beyond? Because I always forget. Um, I think yes, it shove is, it is, a, it it is. is a shove. You're it good. is basically so an athletic you, check. You can use a shove yeah. in place of either of your attacks for action, so you technically have two tries at this. Hell yeah. Um, actually, hold on. Am I reading that night? If you're able to make multiple attacks. Yeah, it's, yes, it's okay. an action. So then it's what not you're going to do it's an is uh, instead of making an attack roll, you will roll an athletics check, and he can try and contest you. Um, I will be upfront with this that it's going to be tough for him. He's going to have disadvantage because of the current predicament of both holding someone and being penetrated by a short sword. So go ahead and just roll me that athletics check, and we'll set it. Also, you have a bardic. <laughs> that is true. Actually, does that work for setting DCs though? I don't think it does. It only. Uh, it them. says any ability check, mm -hmm. um, saving throw, or attack roll. This is an ability check. Yeah. No, it's an it's a special attack roll. The argument would be more towards attack roll, I think, than ability check. A special melee attack to shove a creature. So if it still counts as a melee attack, then yeah, I guess you're right. So yeah, you could, could do that. Your choice. Melee attack, 15. So oh, add assume... the... You the can if you, you, can well, if you want, there's, there's no reason not to. Yeah, you can if you want, essentially. I mean, even if you get a 1, it's a 16. So there we yep. go. So, so 20, up 24. To, up to a 24 is very good. So he's rolling at disadvantage anyway because of his current predicament, and with an 11 plus 4, he is not going to be able to meet. Uh, See, if you hadn't used otherwise. the bark, he would have succeeded. So you rush up, and you jump at this guy, and you knock both him and then, of course, the other two, because one's being held and the other is kind of penetrating him. The All four of you are going to, uh, if I can not grab Really? Him. He doesn't let me go? <laughs> Uh, I mean, no, he's he's, he's not it's kind to. of a death grip. I fucking hate the way that this is being a dick to me right now. There we go. Uh, all all of you kind of end up in the sunlight, and at this point, he screams out as the sun kind of starts to burn these bright yellow spots into his skin that very quickly turn to ash and start to fade away. And you have killed yourselves, a vampire. Cool. My plan folks. for if it made it back to my turn was I was going to heat metal your sword and melt them from the inside. It might have worked. <laughs> yeah, the, so the other thing that would have worked is even even if you had just attacked normally, um, Blake, the radiant damage actually works the same way as sunlight on these guys. Mm -hmm. But regardless, you guys figured it out. You got him into the sun, and he has burned himself to death. So congratulations. At this point, the one shot will be ending. Your characters would look around the room, see everyone start to kind of calm down, and once again, your vision would simply fade to black as you are all returned back to the barracks. Um, I, I want my reward. What reward? Uh, from from uh, that from the lady? The lady said she would give us a reward. She checks his neck. Oh, so, I haven't dated that rep in a while. Yeah. I knew that dress was dyed with blood. So we're going to put you three here. <laughs> as if you, yeah, as I if called you that shit so you early. Did call <laughs> As you both, as you all come in and and your complaints fly freely, you know, you've got uh, Chenkis over here complaining about his reward. You got Nuke talking about his stuff, and you just all hear uh, a a very slow clap as Gemini looks over at you. Congratulations, congratulations! The first group in quite a long time to impress me that much. I thank you for your assistance today. And with that, we will pretty much call it there, unless you guys want to chat. No, that's that's, that's awesome. good for me. Very awesome. good. Fantastic. Nuke, nuke out. That was a fun one. I've been sitting on that one for a while. I love Goaty. Yeah, honestly, was... you guys had really good characters for this sort of a, a setup. Well, oh. yeah, it was good for me at the end. Yeah, well, that's the thing. That's, <laughs> no, that's kind of what wait, I'm getting here. Part with, like. I can't just, do sneak attack. It was, it was a setup well from the problem, grave. though, more than anything, right? Do, yeah. Because, like, once the setup worked, you were able to do the numbers that I knew would... would like, once I yeah. saw the characters you guys had assembled and I kind of knew what monsters you'd be facing, I was like, well, the Blood Hunter is going to be good to fi for figuring out. Zachariah is going to be a great support, and you can deal enough damage with the Rogue that this won't be a hard fight if you can set it up properly. Especially that crit. That crit was enough to kill him oh outright, I will tell you. Like, he he died outright. The only reason he was still alive is because he hadn't taken the Radiant damage within that turn. I yeah. did a lot more well, damage than I expected, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, all of you guys were... Well, you the fire really does. The, the liar is fantastic. Huge. Yeah. That that liar, after I gave it the Scarn, or you allowed realize, him to have yeah. it, and he started using it, I was like, wow, this thing is so overpowered. Oh, and... I mean, you 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 only used Wall of Fire from it, but it's well, just... it's because 
there's a lot of concentration spells on it. So yes. I was trying to pick and choose what was appropriate for the situation. Right. And I thought I might be able to buy us time if I trapped the vampires well, so we could focus fair, on the little guys. You, you, you did. did. Because you that, did. that lady being stuck, if she honestly, with the it was like 5d8s, yeah, right? She only had like 25 health. So with 5d8s, that's, the, the, you know, 3d8s is almost enough to kill her there, 24 damage. So I really couldn't risk her jumping out, so it was just a matter of she had to wait. And if the concentration dropped, suddenly she was going to be useful again. But, no, nah, you, you, you single-handedly locked her up. I mean, it was, it made you a, basically the most threatened, because you were the most oh, threatening. But it fucking worked out great. You guys managed it really well. And I'm Getting just, I'm, I'm talking to shit the entire time. Yeah, it was great. You were doing fantastic. For for someone who's not, not done Bard before, you were uh, fitting the role well. All right, I gotta get out of here. I gotta get Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for hanging, Blake. Yep. Hopefully you enjoyed yeah, the workshop. And uh, I will give you a secret little heads up. Uh, you know, next week, as long as Fred is here, uh, he will have two two NPCs to play for you guys to enjoy that we've kind of been working and on. Next week being two weeks next, from Yeah, now. sorry, two weeks yes. from now. Yeah, next, yeah. next session yeah. is the proper next term. Session, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, no, that's gonna be sweet. No, this one it, shot it was dope. Fun. I'm glad we did that. That was yeah. fun as fuck. It was a great <laughs> idea. I, I, whoever made the joke, I mean, honestly, like the fact that you made me think of it. You know, I, I, I'd been sitting on this scenario. It was ready. I just hadn't really had a reason to use it. So, yeah, it's dope. Yeah. All right, motherfuckers. Absolutely. Later. Have a good night, man. Bye. Later. Yeah, that was that was really. Yeah, fun. him him getting out of charm was yes. extremely helpful. Yes. Because if he didn't get out that turn. The party and probably wiped, honestly, without that. It Which is why I was I was actually really difficult. glad with where he positioned himself, because I'm like, okay, I, I don't want the party to fail this, but I'm also not going to give them a way out. But he positioned himself in front of a zombie, and it doesn't know any better. It, all it knows is it was supposed yeah. to kill these things before, so... Yeah. Um, and him having advantage on that save, too. Like, he actually could not have had a more perfect character for that scenario. <laughs> in all oh, honesty. yeah. 100%. He was doing so many adva like... advantage rolls to try and figure shit out, too. Yeah. <laughs> Did he know we were playing vampires? Yeah. He's like, oh, Blood Hunter. Yeah. yeah let's well, do that. Yeah. He, he actually built the character before this. Yeah, he had a level and one Blood just... Hunter because it was something that Harrison suggested to him uh, for a next character. So, yeah, he was just sitting on that. It just happened to work out. That was great. Ow.